Taal Perfectly. First of all, thank you to all uh, fellow colleagues who uh, spare your time and, and make commitment, commitment to attend our webinar today. I will be sharing my screen. Um, please tell me whether you can see it or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Farah Dina Yusuf. Uh, I am the director of ADEL. And I will be uh, sharing this session with my uh, deputy director, Dr. Zahiruddin Fitri Abu Hassan, who needs no introduction. Semua orang kenal Dr. Zahir. She, he is so famous in the M okay, and beyond. Uh, jadi, both of us will be sharing with you what uh, is microprudential and how we are going to implement microprudentials in UM. This is the uh, agenda for today because we have two speakers. Um, so, we have divided um, the sessions into few. Uh, we'll start with introduction to microcredentials and then 10.30, I will talk about what is the difference between MC, uh, MOOC and ODL. And 10.40, I will start with where to start. Okay, in case some of you are interested to start, we don't know how to how to start um, designing it. So I'll talk about that. Okay, I'll try to um, speak uh, cepat cepat. <laughs> okay, uh, so that uh, will give more time for my colleague, Dr. Zahe. He will talk about what is future learn, and then he will walk you through the particular part and uh, at 12.30 with Q&A. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So part one is introduction to micro-credentials at UM. We have heard about micro-credentials or MC. Uh, what is micro-credentials? This is the definition given by MQA in their publication on May 2020. So micro-credentials is defined as digital certification, okay, uh, of assessed knowledge, skills, and competency. Okay, the keyword that I highlighted, the digital certificate. Second, assess, meaning that there is an assessment involved in the MC course. Um, and the assessment will be in a specific area or field which can be a component of accredited program or standalone courses with the purpose to support the professional, technical, academic and personal development of the learners. So by this definition, we know that there is one uh, and a digital certificate will be issued. Okay. Second, there will be assessment of the knowledge um, delivered in the course. And third, it could be a component of existing accredited program, academic program, or it can be standalone courses. I will talk about this, um, the three types of courses in MC soon. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, micro-credential have many, many platforms. Okay, these are some of the most popular ones. You might have heard about Coursera. Okay, Coursera um, is very active recruiting people to enroll in their courses for free for certain um, in certain days. Okay, and for my, I myself um, took a course uh, from Coursera, a statistics course, which I have not completed yet. But uh, the, the Coursera uh, platform organizer gave me a seven days free trial. And after that, on the eighth day, I have to start paying them. Okay, so if I want to get it free, I have to complete everything within that seven days. They call micro credential as specialization. So if you go to Coursera, they click on the specialization. So they will show you what are the um, MC micro credential programs which they call specialization. Another platform is EDX, edX. Okay. Um, the uh, micro credential program is called micro masters. Okay? I will show you later what what do they mean by micro? Why is it called micro, not masters? Okay? Another one is called Udacity. You probably have heard Udacity way um, years back. So their their credential or their micro credential program is called nano degree. 
see how they uh, package it, the name uh, is quite different, but both are uh, telling us um, very micro, very specific, very minor um, part of the course. Okay, So this one, openlearning.com, you may have heard Open Learning was at one time in Malaysia the official platform for uh, online courses in Malaysia. Okay, but now um, all uh, higher education institutions are free to choose whatever platform they want. So Open Learning is a company based in Australia uh, and they have partnered with, um, with many institutions in Malaysia, including USM, University Science Malaysia. Um, previously, ADANC and UM have had courses in OpenLearning.com. But then, uh, after the agreement um, end, we moved to another platform called FutureLearn.com. So FutureLearn is currently the official platform for all UM community. If you want to um, publish and offer your micro-credential course, you must use FutureLearn.com. So just a little bit uh, background of FutureLearn, Dr. Zahir probably will talk more because he is the liaison between UM and FutureLearn. So FutureLearn is a company based in UK, okay, United Kingdom. Um, so one of the reasons that we want to um, get partnership with FutureLearn is the uh, broad and wide coverage of target audiences. Uh, if you look at the, um, the demographic of the learners, you will see that many of them come from UK, um, Spain, and many more. Okay. Now, part two. What is the difference between micro-credential, MOOC, and ODL? Okay. Yeah. I try to make it in a visual part so that we know uh, what you're talking about. Okay. I actually have cut a lot of slides and I think uh, no need introduction because these are the things that people are quite confused with. Okay, you have heard about open distance learning. Yesterday, um, during the Perutusan Vice Chancellor, we have heard about open distance learning or ODL in short to be one of the flagship program in UM. Okay, I'm taking an example from my own faculty, Faculty of Education. So everybody know Faculty of Education uh, is part of uh, other faculty, of course. Um, and they offer three bachelor's program. Okay, one is called Bachelor of Counseling, very marketable, very popular. Another most popular one in Faculty of Education is actually Bachelor of Education, and the third one, Bachelor of Education TESA. So, um, this Faculty of Education offer three programs. Okay, and. For each program, let's say Bachelor of Early Education, there are several courses that the students have to enroll and complete. Okay, so it's, it's similar to what we know already, um, even before the pandemic. Okay, when we have face-to-face -face interaction with the students, we will tell the students, okay, you are now in the program called Bachelor of Early Edu Early Childhood Education. These are the list of courses that you have to enroll and complete. Okay, I just um, pull out five uh, examples of the courses. The first one is called Introduction to Special Education, three credit hours delivered within 14 weeks of class. Second called Child Development course, also three credit hours, 14 weeks to complete. Um, the third one, Introduction to Instructional Technology. The fourth one is called Play and Development. And finally, early childhood mathematics. There are much more, but I'm just take five. Okay, so we know that there's a faculty offering several programs, and for each program, there are several courses that they have to complete. Okay, I think everybody knows that, and that is um, our we call it traditional or our normal degree. Okay, without the pandemic. Okay, so now. Um, the same structure also is called open distance learning, but it is delivered online. 
he doesn't the only difference between traditional or on campus um, program or degree with open distance learning the okay, open distance learning have many models it could be hybrid for example 80 percent of the bachelor uh, of early childhood education can be delivered online and the rest of 20 percent can be delivered face to face okay this happened in um, not mistaken, Open University Malaysia, um, maybe Wawasan, Wawasan Open University as well. Okay, they have like 80% online uh, courses and then the rest 20% is delivered online. Okay, there's another model of ODL which is totally 100% delivered online. Okay, there is no face-to-face -face interaction. If there is any interaction, Face to face is through the computer using the uh, platform like Google Meet, Zoom, um, and so on. Okay, so this one I think everybody is fine. Okay, now let's go deeper. What is massive open online courses? MOOC. Okay, taking the same example, remember just now there is a faculty of education offering three programs and let's take one example bachelor of early education and in bachelor of education there are five courses that the students have to enroll and complete right okay now MOOC is um, taking one of the five courses and transform it or or divide it into uh, several you can say divide it in smaller uh, chunk based on the topics okay let's say we take this the third course introduction to instructional technology usually um, in in traditional or face face to face or on campus or even odl um, structure we will deliver uh, let's say four topics okay, in, in that course now each topic in that course can now be delivered online and it is called MOOC. I can, let's say my first topic is introduction to instructional technology as a field. That is topic one. I can make it into one MOOC, okay, MOOC one. The next topic that I have in the course is the five steps in designing meaningful experience. I can convert it into MOOC and I can call it MOOC two, MOOC number two, okay. Then I have another topic. It's called conducting mid analysis. So I can make it into the third one, MOOC 3. Okay, and finally, I have another, sub, uh, another topic called designing learning experience, which can stand alone as MOOC number 4. Okay, so that is massive open online courses. Remember just now, the open distance learning is a total program with courses and each courses have its own credit hours and um, have to complete the 14 weeks. But now we are just taking one course from that program and um, divide it into several topics. And for each topic, we can call it MOOC number one, MOOC number two, until MOOC number four. Okay, I hope that's clear. Okay, let's move on. Okay, remember this. We have program, courses, and topics. So what is micro-credential? We are going deeper. Okay, we have the topic number three. Okay, and we have subtopics in topic number three, which we can further divide into micro-credential. Let's, let's take a look at this example again. Okay, there is a faculty of education. They have a program called Bachelor of Early Education and they have five courses. They develop one courses into four MOOCs. Okay, let's see MOOC number three, Conducting Need Analysis is part of the topic. So we then look into the to top, the top Conducting Need Analysis and we then further divide it into subtopics. And for each subtopic, it can be considered as micro-credential. So I can have, let's say I have um, four topics in that main topic. So I can have one micro-credential course on need assessment alone. Second micro-credential on learner analysis. 
The third, micro-credential on contextual analysis. And the fourth one, I have micro-credential on content analysis. Okay. Now, the question is where to stop. Okay. How do we know we have to stop? Uh, and how to, which topic, which subtopics should be uh, further developed? Okay. Number one, uh, we want to have as much audience as possible. Okay, we want more people in our class and complete it and pay for it. Okay, so you can choose uh, which one from your topics or subtopics that you think are popular and uh, have added values or something that people will look into. Okay, from this subtopics, I can further divide it into modules. Okay, I call it modules. What is modules? Okay, there are many definitions and there's academic definition, but my definition to make it easy for everyone is that module is the smallest you need of um, instruction okay, or smallest you need of topics that can no further be break down. Okay, so Let's take an example, MOOC, uh, sorry, MC1. Um, the subtopic is need assessment. I can even break it down further into the five types of needs. Okay, we call module. So I will have normative needs, module one, comparative needs, module two, uh, felt needs, module three, anticipated needs, module four, and critical incidental needs, number five. So that's how we develop our micro-credential. Okay, can you see now why it is called micro-masters, okay, micro-masters or nano-degree? Because it has broken down everything from topics to subtopics further to modules. Okay. Is that okay for everyone? Okay, you can ask me any question if you like. Okay, you don't have to wait until the end of the presentation. Okay, this is the, um, the visual ways of seeing what is the difference between ODL. Okay, let me go back. This is the ODL. Okay, we have programs and we have courses and we deliver it either a hybrid version or totally online. We then take one course from the ODL or from the ordinary uh, course and we further break it down into topics that is called MOOC. From one MOOC, we further make um, division into subtopics and modules. So that's micro credential. Okay, so that's why it's called nano, micro, specialization and so on. Okay. In University of Malaya, EDAC is responsible to help you develop your micro-credential courses. I will introduce you to the team of micro-credentials. They are also with us today online. Okay? Um, but for open distance learning, it is under um, the responsibility of UMC SAT. Okay? So a lot of people sometimes get confused and they uh, will ask EDAC about ODL, but we are not um, in charge of ODL, but we are helping you with, our, with your MOOC and your micro-credentials, okay? Now, let's take a difference. Uh, let's see the difference and similarities between the two um, type of learning or short course. MOOC, the concept is you can enroll in the course anytime when they offer it for free. Okay, so let's say they have five topics you can um, learn all those topics for free, but you have to pay the platform to get the certificate. Okay, so the concept is enroll for free, pay for certificate. Whereas micro credentials, if we take it as a program, you have to pay it up front, okay? So you cannot um, enroll in the course without paying it first. So pay first, get certificate, okay? So that's the model 
of micro credentials and MOOC. Uh, what are the similarities between the two? Both are online short courses. Okay, we are targeting professionals, people who um, who are already professionals in the field, working people, people who wanted to enhance their knowledge or have a refresh um, knowledge about their job or just people who simply wanted to enhance their CV for job hunting purposes. Okay, we have a lot of uh, reasons for people taking MOOC and micro credentials. So both MOOC and micro credentials are online short courses. How short it is? Okay, it can be two to six weeks short per course. Okay, let's say if I can go back to, uh, let's say I'm going uh, to develop need assessment micro credential and I have five subtopics like this one. I probably will cover this uh, in three weeks or two weeks. Okay, if I decided to have more subtopics, okay, so I can have uh, perhaps six weeks. Okay. So it depends on the weightage um, and the richness of your course content. Okay, ADEC and our team, our instructional designers will help you to figure out how, how long should it be, what are the breakdown of your topics and so on. Okay, yeah. so we are so blessed to, to have them here. Now, because these two courses, the MOOC and Micro Credentials are totally online, so we um, we want the students or the the participants of MOOC and micro credentials to self learn. Okay, so they are. We can say that for each week, each one week of course, maybe they will take about two hours to complete the subtopic. Okay, let me go back to the first one. Let's say I'm developing a micro credential called need assessment. Okay, and there are five modules. Students in my course should be able to complete all five modules in say two hours because it's not that hard for okay, uh, two hours or maybe four hours. Okay, our instructional designers will advise you what is the student learning time in micro credential. Okay, we don't call it SLT, my, uh, student learning time, because we don't want people to get confused with the existing student learning time. What do we call it now? I, call, I think we call micro credential learning time. OK, so that makes it easy for people to remember, right? Now, I forgot to put in um, in these two um, figures. Uh, MOOC, OK, for MOOC, it could be a combination of synchronous, like face to face, like using the Zoom Google Meet, and asynchronous, where students um, self-learn materials that are stored online in the platform. So MOOC can be a combination of synchronous plus asynchronous. Whereas micro-credentials, most uh, micro-credential models are totally self-paced learning, meaning that the students have to learn um, by themselves. There is no interaction like face-to-face uh, or, or asynchronously with the instructions. So you don't have to do Google Meet with your students or you don't have to do uh, Zoom with your students. And your students are diverse. Okay, They are not just like our small classroom. We only have 330 to 100 people. But when you open up your MOOC or micro-credential courses, your course could be your, your students will be 6,000 students from all around the world. Okay, I hope Dr. Zahi will touch on that. Okay, so how do you have, how do you want to have a synchronous meeting with them? Okay, so the only way that we can make sure they are learning well by themselves is by making sure that our learning materials are totally uh, self-learn, uh, self-learn approved. Is there such a word? Okay, it means that by looking, by just looking at our, not looking, by, by just uh, learning through our modules, the students can understand the concepts better without the presence, without, or without the need of a lecturer presence. Now let's put it that way, okay? 
So most of the micro credential learning materials are usually video based, but we also have some articles or readings for them to uh, read. Um, it could be forum where students interact with the lecturer or we call it developer of the course through the forum section. Um, or they can also interact with each other. Okay. Similarly, MOOC also um, should be self-learned materials. Okay. Although it is not that um, heavy on the using video-based materials like micro-credentials. Right. So upon completing these two types of online courses, either MOOC or micro-credentials, students will get a certificate, a digital certificate. Do I have, um, okay, I, I can, if you need to see, I can show you uh, how does it look like. Um, so they can get certification upon completion of our courses. If they stack or they compile all these certificates, okay, they can um, pursue or get an online or traditional degree. Okay, this is something that uh, sometimes people confuse, so I don't want to talk more about that in this introduction session. Um, but I can say that there are several pathways of how to do it. Um, some universities is the, in the Western countries, what they uh, are doing is that um, from the certificates that students gather from the MOOC or micro-credentials, which are approved by the university, the students can use the certificate and bring it to the university to get, um, what you call that? Um, where they, they don't have to take that course, a wave, uh, a course wave, okay? So that can be done. And uh, because they have, if they took uh, several courses or and several certificates, uh, they can get several courses waived so their degree, okay, their traditional degree, let's say they are they want to get Bachelor of Early Childhood Education degree. So um, they can skip several courses uh, on campus that can be done. That's one business model. I've also seen that um, some people who have enrolled, um, let's say, must online master's degree from either MOOC or micro credentials, they can use the degree totally they don't have to compensate or they don't have to go to the um, campus and get a certification anymore. They can just get a degree online, totally online. Okay, so, but in University of Malaya, we are not yet there. We are working toward it. As our vice chancellor mentioned yesterday, uh, we should enroll the program such program in October 2021. So I suppose that um, ASP will tell us more about this. Okay. Okay. Now the big picture of micro credentials at UM. Um, I've mentioned to you how we took uh, one course, divide into topics, subtopics, and then modules. Okay. This is the big picture. So in University of Malaya, we have this program we call Micro Credentials at UM, MC at UM. Um, there are three categories of courses in micro, in micro but I only but I want to, to highlight. Okay, let's uh -huh. say um, we have an existing program, existing academic program in our faculty right now. Okay. This is called category one, component of accredited programs. So we can then convert this academic program okay, into courses, MOOC courses, and further divide it into topics and subtopics and modules, which we call micro-credentials. Okay? Uh, for your information, we have already started to roll out and offer our micro-credential courses October, no, not October, that December 2020. We have been working on um, developing the courses until its publication on the CurriculumLearn platform since um, October 2020. Okay, the other category is that it's called freestanding courses. Freestanding courses are courses that, okay, let's see if I have the definition okay, later. Uh, freestanding courses are courses are which are not related to existing academic program. Okay, it could be something like 
any professional development programs. Like for example, at that, we have the Emerald program for new lecturers or for lecturers who wants to get uh, confirmation. So we can develop Emerald into micro-credential program if we want. There is another um, example, niche programs. Let's say you um, coming from uh, API Academy Pengajian Islam or APM Academy Pengajian Melayu, you have a lot of courses that are very interesting to the public because they are so um, like cultural based, very um, natural, um, yeah, interesting courses. Okay, and these are called niche programs. For example, now we have Islamic calligraphy. This is one of the most popular program that we offer right now. Uh, we have a lot of interest. People pay for the program. Um, they are mostly coming from the UK. Come, uh, people, UK students pay for the program, Islamic calligraphy. For APM, um, there's another one, uh, introduction, introduction to Bahasa Melayu. <laughs> okay. So uh, these are uh, niche examples of niche programs. Okay, another example will be summer school programs. Let's say you have in your faculty um, a very specific and very special programs, uh, inbound or outbound program that you want to convert into online courses. You may want to do that too. Okay. Now, uh, there are, I mentioned just now, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, Linda have uh, put this uh, slide. Very nicely, so I'll just mention to you. So type one is academic courses. Type three, uh, example, is professional development program or niche area and also summer school programs. If I'm not mistaken, now we are working with AEI to develop their summer school program. Maybe later we can um, collaborate with UMCARES and so on. Yeah? Okay, how does it look like in University of Malaya? Okay, we are thinking perhaps I'm also a lecturer we have maybe we are thinking about alamak do I have to um, you know this is an add-on to my existing work actually it is not okay so this is what we suggest to everyone okay every lecturer let's say let's take a look at this example let's say we are teaching a course called research methodology okay we have week one until week 14 right so week one, week three, um, the topic is introduction to research. So you can deliver it totally as you are doing now using Spectrum, Microsoft Teams, Google Meets, and so on. Week four to week six, we have uh, a topic called introduction to quantitative methods. You can still use your Spectrum. Week seven to week seven, eh, week seven to week 11. Okay, introduction to qualitative methods, you can still deliver it online using the spectrum. But okay, on week 12, 13, and 14, you have developed your courses online and offer it at futurelearn.com. So um, let's say the topic is research, research proposal writing. What you need to do is just to ask your students to go learn the topic online at futurelearn.com instead of asking them to go to your spectrum. Okay, so I think that's quite simple, right? So what we are trying to do is that we are actually, when you do develop your micro-credential course, you are actually developing the materials uh, where students can do it online and it is a relief on your side as well. You can just uh, do as usual, okay? Only in the beginning when you want to develop the MC courses, it could be a little bit, a lot of hassle uh, because it's something new. But once it's done, it's there. So you can just ask the students, okay, on week 12 to week 14, just go to future and complete the program. Okay? Okay, these are the definition given by MQA about the categories of MC. I don't want to uh, go deeper, but I can just say, the first type number one or category one are MCs which are component of accredited program of a higher education provider or in short, we can say existing academic program. Number two, MCs which are components of accredited programs of multiple HEPs, multiple universities. 
Right now, um, we are not going to look into type 2 because it's quite complicated. We want to focus on type 1 and type 3. Type 3 is freestanding MCs, okay, which I have uh, given you examples um, like your summer school program, niche areas, and so on. If you would like to know more about micro-credentials, kindly go to our website and you can find under the uh, resources or, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, you just click on this and you can get micro-credentials at UM guideline. Okay, we will keep on updating the micro-credentials at UM guideline time to time if we get new or uh, recent development. Okay, now where to start? Okay. I'm sure you are now, and I hope you are interested and excited to start your MC at UM. Okay. What you need to do first is to identify the course that you want to uh, transform into micro-credential course. Okay. May I um, ask you to first consult your Ketua Jabatan and your Timbalan Dekan and your Dekan. Okay. Because uh, as I mentioned, we are very much interested to develop existing academic program. So the course that you want to offer, okay, uh, must be related to current semesters. Oh, no, sorry, current uh, program. Okay, we don't want you to offer micro credentials, which is no longer um, or are going are going to be, you know, mm, diminished later. Okay, it's just a waste of everybody's. Uh, time and resources. Okay, so please talk to your Ketua Jabatan, PD or MC, uh, sorry, MC, pula, the Dean, okay, and get their approval. Okay, once you are certain that this is the course that you want to offer as MC, email us and add that. Okay, and once we receive your email, uh, add that will reply to you and we will ask you to um, complete we call template one. Template one is just like your um, course performer where we want to know what are the topics and the subtopics. Okay, that's template one. Uh, we will then take a look. Okay, the orange boxes are edit role and the uh, brown boxes are your role as lecturer. So once we see and review your template one, uh, if we think that uh, you are qualified. It's not so good for to support. But if we think that um, it can be further developed into MC, we will let you know and we will then uh, provide you with template two. Template two is much more um, detailed where we want to know what is your plan. Uh, let's say from topic to subtopic to modules, what are the assessment that you want to use? Uh, how do you want to deliver it? Whether you want to deliver it through videos or through um, articles reading, quizzes and so on. Okay, then we will then check and approve uh, the template. Once we say it's okay, we'll give you a course creator form and then you will need to fill in the script and storyboard template. Okay, you can see that this is a, a mutual uh, working together between you and a deck team. Okay, we can't do this on our own and you can't do it on your own unless you are very expert in video editing and so on. So we really need your help. We need your commitment. Once you are interested, you email it to us. And, and once we say that, okay, your course is approved, we need you all the time to complete it, okay? So um, you will need to commit to fill in all the templates and commit to do the script and then commit to do the video shooting, okay? And we will do the video editing for you um, and get uh, do a lot of works, I mean, confirming whether this is okay or not, okay, until the end, we will uh, develop the course and submit it to Future Learn. So Future Learn later will take a look. They will review the course and see whether it is okay or not. They have their own standards. Yeah? Okay. Once they say it is okay, then only we can have internal review where we call uh, several people who are 
knowledgeable in the area to see whether the topics and the way we present it uh, are okay, then only we will publish it in our, our future learning. So it's quite a tedious process, but don't worry, EDEC is here to help you, so we will be working together. It's not like you want to develop, to develop an um, MC course, you're, you're on your own. No, you will be by your side, but we we'll need your time commitment. Okay. Uh, if you are interested to know more detail about this, there is a flow chart. You can look at this, uh, click on this um, link um, on EDEC website and you'll see um, the detail um, process. Okay, I'll skip this and this. Okay, this one. So what do we get from the top management? Why do you want to do this? Okay. First of all, um, the TNCA have issued a letter to your deans and directors dated 3rd of July 2020. Um, any lecturer who are developing courses as micro-credential should be given a reduced uh, teaching load by one course. Let's say you're usually in one semester teach four courses. If you have one uh, micro-credential course in that semester, so you can um, now talk to your faculty management and say, okay, I have this uh, MC course and you teach only three courses plus one uh, MC course. Okay, so this is one way to help you with the teaching load. We need you all the time, so you should be available uh, use based on our schedule. Okay. Second, you can also claim from your KPI, the, your yearly KPI, under the faculty center specific duties, which carry zero to ten percent. Okay, if you um, uh, if you want to develop it in year 2021, so once you can use the, the letter that EDEC will issue to you, so you can get or you can claim your KPI under that um, section. Okay, this is also a letter from TNCA to the deans and director dated 2nd of July 2020. So, so management give you a lot of support. Okay, this is when I would like to introduce our MC team. They are also online. Um, myself, uh, I call myself as the project director. Okay, so I will be really looking into this. This is one of my um, priority uh, project. So I will be looking into my credential myself. Dr. Zahiruddin Fitri, uh, my deputy director, is the coordinator of the MC at UM project. And he is our university liaison with Future Learn. So he knows everything about future learn. He has good connections. Um, you can talk to him also. My dear Dr. Amira, or my deputy director, is also a liaison and coordinator for this future, um, sorry, for this micro credential projects. And she has very good um, connections and relationship with many of you in the faculties and departments. So you may want to approach her, okay? or any of the team if you want. Okay, um, I have uh, Nur, Nur Arz, I call him Azrul. You can call him Azrul also. Nur Azrul, Nur Azrul Azam Halzi, and also Muhammad Huzairi. These are um, our technical staffs um, in ADAC who will be looking at logistics and technical things. For example, they will be the one who will be uh, setting up the shooting um, area or the studio where we when we want to do the video recording okay and um, uh, they can also be your cameraman they will take care of the crowd let's say we are doing it at uh, outdoor okay uh, we have been doing in many outdoors uh, we did in Tasi um as well so there are crowd control okay they will take care of everything okay so then our team uh, Norashida or Shida, she is our project manager and instructional designer. I think Shida is here, boleh buka uh, camera ya yeah? on the team so that people can know you. So that's Shida. Yes, yeah, Shida here. Yeah, okay. So Shida is responsible to um, to oversee the whole process 
of uh, MC development. She will be the one who is scheduling, uh, who goes first, uh, in, how many people will be in this um, time frame and so on. Okay, so you will be talking to her a lot if uh, once you have your course have been approved. Then we have Nur Shafika or Shafika. Sha. Okay. Are you there, Sha? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, Nur Shafika is our instructional designer who will be helping you to see uh, and break down your topics, subtopics, and into modules. She is also our video editor because a lot of our materials will be video based material. Okay. Then we have Nurul Janna or Janna. Hi. Janna. Sorry, came here. <laughs> Problem. Janna is also our instructional designer, come our video editor, just like Shafika. And she will be helping you to, um, again, like Shafika, uh, see the overall um, picture. And one of their job is to look whether your course has been offered online. Okay, because we don't want to be uh, replicating existing course. If there is a need and we think that there is a um, will be demand for the course that you offer, even though there is already one uh, in future learn. Okay, so we'll see these people will help you see what else can we um, have in your course that people are will be interested. For example, let's say you want to develop a research methodology course. There are so many research methodology courses around the world, right? Okay, and uh, also in future learn. What are the added uh, values that we can put in your course? So these are the jobs of our instructional designers, okay? Another one is one Noor Izzati Ifah Wan Mansur. You can call her Izzati. She is also here. Hello. Hi. Okay. She is an instructional designer and she has uh, expertise as graphic design okay why do we need a graphic designer because a lot of all your materials are not just um you talking to the people it will be bored right so we will include some kind of animations you have you seen like um if i'm talking like here and then there is um words falling down here there going in and out okay she will be doing that graphics for you okay uh, don't have to worry they all have the expertise that we need Okay, the most important people in this team is for Linda Jamaluddin or Linda. You have seen her just now as the moderator, Linda. Linda is our assistant registrar who is in charge of the MC uh, project. Okay, we call it a uh, coordinator. So whenever you are uh, going to talk to a that team, you will have to go through Linda first. Okay, she will be responsible answering your uh, calls about MC, your uh, emails and so on about MC. Everything is with her. Okay, she will be making sure that everything is um, organized, uh, recorded and so on. Okay, um, that means these are the people who are responsible in ADAPT for the MC project, but we still have our other staffs, for example, UMU, um, our Ketua Unit, uh, our senior uh, assistant registrant Chenizam and so on, who will also help in this team. So you can actually contact everyone, anyone from uh, this um, ADAPT, and then they will direct you to the right person. Okay. I think I talked too much. Okay, Dr. Zahi, are you there? Okay, uh, maybe I can take some questions first if anyone has any question before we move to Dr. Zahi. Okay, I'm early now. Hmm, I'm so happy. Okay, any question from the audience? Hi, uh, Dr. Farah. Hi. Uh, I'm Ardiana from ISB, Faculty of Science. Um, I have a question regarding the stackable certificates. Can the certificate come from both MOOC and also micro-credential or just one of, of the, the, the type of the course? Okay, so the stackable certificates can be from both MOOC or micro-credential course. Okay? 
Um, the way we do it in UM right now is that we start um, slow, we start small. So we'll start developing your course as MOOC first. Okay. For example, let's say my course research methodology, I will take one subtopic and then I will make it as a MOOC first okay, for two weeks. So that people get to know okay. you as the instructor and the quality of our materials. And once they got interested, we will then offer them another MOOC. Okay. Uh, so let's say my second subtopic with you or maybe with somebody else. Now, if you are interested to take the other one, they have to pay. So that will become micro credential. So they can stack the, the um, certificates from MOOC uh, to micro credentials. It's, the concept is almost the same. Uh, one more question, if I may. So, um, are MOOC can also MC uh, both um, use the future learn platform ataupun berbeza platformnya? Uh, um, the official platform will be future learn. So both MOOC and MC will be using futurelearn.com. Okay, understand. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me um, share with you. Uh, Dr. Zaid, boleh betulkan if I'm salah. Eh? So, um, we have, University Malaya have subscribed to futurelearn.com. Um, so, you don't have to pay them okay, uh, to, to get their, their services. Um, so if you are going to other platforms, for example, Udacity, edX, Coursera, Open Learning and so on, first, um, you may have to pay the platform provider, okay, uh, which will not be covered by UM. You are on your own, okay. Second, you will not get the instructional design services from EDEC. We will not cover that. We will only help you develop your courses if you are going to offer it in futurelearn.com. Okay. Any other question? Assalamualaikum. Uh, Dr. Nujana here. Um, just... Off the cuff, I think the uh, setup is, I'm sure you know that the Faculty of Law has a Bachelor of Jurisprudence, uh, which is an external program. Uh, it seems to be quite a nice fit for this kind of uh, uh, new idea of uh, the, the micro-credential because most of the students are actually uh, all over Malaysia. So, uh, and what we've done basically is like every, uh, when, when, before the pandemic, we had classes like uh, every month for, for the courses. So now it's online and I think it's, it's struggling as well. So if we can sort of um, use, um, of course, we need to get the academics to come on board, uh, use uh, micro-credential on specific parts that would fit nicely with what you have uh, suggested yeah, yeah. Um, on how to do it um, so that's because we already have uh, something ongoing there under the bachelor of uh, jurisprudence external students yeah mm -hmm. uh, but i want to ask a question with regards to um, a standalone course which can be linked to uh, my my subject which is insurance law but only a portion of it because certain parts are, are more relevant to the professionals. Mm. So they will want to actually uh, focus on specific concepts, legal concepts or, for example, claims process. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, something which has not uh, been done and I know there's a huge market for that. Because mm. in terms of uh, developing that material, but but then that would be more uh, practical based and not so academic. So susah nak link to my existing course. If you talk about, <coughs> it's related but not not like one hundred percent. So I'm not sure if if we are ready for standalone uh, MCs. We are actually uh, developing some courses. Um, like for summer school programs with several PTJs, um, and they are stand alone. They are standalone courses. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe in your case, we can park in both. Okay. Uh, it can be part of the academic programs, but when we market it, it can be uh, a standalone course. 
is because that's the actually the nature of the micro credential and MOOC course. It is 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 um it can be standalone. Anyone can take it. Um, I would like to suggest to Dr. Jenna and everyone um, listening to this webinar, if you want to develop MC course, I will really strongly um, encourage that you get you think about an audience that you can get first. Okay, let's say you are developing a course uh, like Dr. Jenna uh, uh, law related. You may have professional bodies or association yeah. law, yeah. right? And it yeah. could be a course that is related that they have to uh, complete to get a certain certification, right? So yeah, it's, it's going to be like part of the CPD points. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that will be uh, good. With, with Bar Council or with the uh, MII as well, Malaysian Insurance Institute. So, you know, if you can sort of link that, uh, then it's part of the, the whole requirement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that will be good. Okay, if you have um, identified audience from the very beginning, okay, uh, very much, we are very much happy to help. Okay, it's just that we may not be going through the collaboration like, directly with you. We will need your help. Um, let's say this, you, you know that this is a requirement and what are the learning outcomes that um, the course should be uh, put in. So then you will bring the course proposal or idea and talk to the uh, bar council, for example, say that, okay, you can take uh, anyone taking this course could be uh, getting CPD points and that will be fantastic for us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I've got this course called Civics and Patriotism. Okay. And this paper is, uh, I mean, the, the course has been taught all over Malaysia, but until now, universities or IPGs have not got any information from Ministry of Education. So since I've been teaching this course for a long time, I can make it into an MC. But my question is, will ADEC be able to promote it to Ministry of Education and kind of like get a contract so that all JPNs, you know, all teachers will be involved because it involves five subjects actually. Mm. It involves history, it involves um, English, Malay, uh, Islamic studies and moral education. Mm. So will you all be able to promote it? Because I'll be able to come up with the modules, but not to actually go and promote like what uh, Dr. Jana was telling, you know, with your bar council. So ours is Ministry of Education. Mm. So if we can get that and get teachers to, because teachers have to do LADAP, right? Latihan dalam perkhidmatan. So if it can be that, then it will be... I mean, a win-win situation. We've mm -hmm. got the knowledge, we've got the skills and all that, and they need it. So is that possible for ADEC to be our promoter as well? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bisha, for the question. Uh, as I mentioned, we really, really happy uh, to have the courses marketed to um, existing or targeted audiences. However, we have limitations in helping you to promote or start the collaboration. At the moment, we only help you with the design and development of the course, that's number one. And number two, we will uh, help you promoting your course to general audiences around the world through FutureLearn. FutureLearn have a marketing team, so they are, be, they are going to do this. But for Malaysia, a specific organizations, we do not have the main power to do it know that we have the reputation okay, um, to do so. Perhaps if I can mention, but of course I have not yet talked to the uh, director, you may want to get uh, MRC to help perhaps. okay. And if you have a very good connection with the ministry, it will be very good if you can just mention to them, hey, we have a course like this, and then just direct them to this uh, website uh, in Future Learn and just tell them. Sometimes, um, people get to know things from uh, reputable people like yourself who have very good reputation and collaboration and network. So use use that connection at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. One. Sorry. One burning question. Sure. Um, who's going to own the copyright and all those stuff? Okay. That I will pass. <laughs>
why do I have, <laughs> why do I have the, to, to answer all the, 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 the hard questions? <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, as far as uh, copyright is concerned, we, we follow the UM's uh, copyright um, uh, procedure or rule where um, uh, everything that you do in the course of your employment at the university will belong to the university with you assigned as, as the author. Okay, right, just to get that clear, yeah. Yeah, we will follow the UM rules. Okay, as uh, VC mentioned also, um, all courses developed in UM will be uh, UM uh, materials. But of course, the course owner, the developer also have some copyright, um, some say in that too. Um, I would like to answer a question from the chat box, if it's okay. Uh, Dr. Tang Tuk Moon say that if some subtopics are developed as MC, do students still need to pay since they have paid for the course for the semester? MCs are paid modules as per Dr. Farah's slide just now. Okay, this is a great question. Um, so you're being paying attention to this, right? Um, if the course is developed as part of your academic course in the faculty or center, so the students can go online, but they do not have to pay to get the certificate. Okay, you can just ask them to go through all the materials, do all the assessments there, and stop there. Okay, because once they click on get certification, uh, they are on their own. I mean, they can pay to get the certificate if they want and flash it in the in their social media. And maybe I can show you the slide about that too. Um, so the requirement stops at asking them to do all the assessment. That's it, okay? Uh, they don't have to pay double. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Maybe I can show you um, uh, the slides that I have been hiding from you. <laughs> Kejap, ya. Yeah. Dr. Zahir, um, tak apa kan? I still have time. Kejap, ya. Yeah? Apa cakap tu? Meter. Yeah. You have all the time in the world. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sebab selalunya, I selalu terlebih-lebih masa. Marah dia orang. In this time, I cakap cepat cepat. Okay. Um, yeah. This is the um, uh, the one that I uh, been hiding from you. <laughs> okay. Now that we have a clear conception what MOOC is and micro credential is, I just want to show you in future learn. Um, it's called MOOC is called short courses. Okay, students can complete uh, the activities, meaning that learning the materials, um, uh, answering the questions in forum, and do the assessment, and they can get statement of participation. Just, um, just it's not a it's not a certificate. It's just saying that hey, hey come help, come help. Okay, but if they want to pay to get a certificate, they have to. Okay. So, second one is called micro credentials and program. Okay. Um, in future, then um, it's a little the term that they use is a little bit different from other platform, but actually it's a, an MC course to get a summer So they can get academic credit from the university, and they can get certificate of completion. And later, um, there is another type in future learn uh, website they call online degrees. This is a model where students can get degree totally online from the future language site. So and UM, we are just focusing and on these two short courses and also micro credentials, not not yet the online degree. And you may uh, want to know how much they pay, right? Okay. Um, as I mentioned, it's free. OK, the students can assess your course for free if they think they want to get certificate from University of Malaya and uh, maybe signature from you as the course coordinator. Okay, let's say you are someone very well known internationally. Okay, for, for example, a Harvard professor. I would want to have my my certificate signed by that Harvard professor. I know. Okay, so I will pay for that. So when I pay, it's called upgrade version. Okay, it could be um, in range, if I'm not mistaken, thirty-two dollars to fifty-four dollars. Bukan dollars. Dr. Zahid, uh, dollars ke pound? 
uh, since we are in a different geographical region, it will show up as uh, dollars, but um, the the fee is based on uh, British pounds. So it starts from 32 pounds up until 52 for, for MOOCs. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, so this is the upgrade version, which I say that if they want to um, get certificate, they will pay for your course. And EDEC have, um, have six uh, courses in Future Learn offered right now. And one, uh, two of the courses, if you go to futurelearn.com, Camo Metrics and Air Pollution by Dr. Firuz from Faculty of Science and uh, a team from Engineering Faculty. Um, it's called Communication Skills for Engineers, if I'm not mistaken. So these two courses, um, we charge at $54. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's another um, option for uh, future learn learners if they pay $259.99 per year, they can get unlimited access to any of the courses in Future Learn. Now, you may be wondering alamak, which one of the course cluster uh, I will fit in. Okay, don't worry, there are 14 course clusters, as you can see from this. Um, but you don't have also to worry about which cluster is there. Uh, for me, for you, okay, uh, and that will help you to figure out and FutureLearn also will advise which one they see will be um, interested for you. I have seen a course um, from, I mean, advertised in several cluster, not just one cluster, okay. Okay, this is how the certificate looks like. It could be, um, is this digital? So um, they can show it from their mobile phone. They can also print it. Okay, if you can see the bigger picture, you can see that the name of the learner is uh, stated there. And then uh, there's Future Learn logo. And we can have the uh, University Malaya logo over there, down there. And also the name of the course instructors. Okay, let's say it's, it's me. Uh, so I will do the um, signature and say, Paradina, you sit there. Okay. So, where else? Okay, the students can also you know, flash their badges or certificate in social media, you know, Facebook, in Twitter, Google Mail, uh, even email, and so on. Okay, LinkedIn. Uh, so this has been a new culture, a new trend in our online course, um, um, we call that uh, era, okay? Where students, um, I have seen myself, I mean, I have experienced myself. Uh, I've got um, several international students who are interested to be uh, my supervisee. And when I look at their CV, they have uh, they mentioned to me a list of a bunch of courses they have completed online from renowned university like from Harvard, Stanford, and so we are like wow. Okay, so it's something that um, that the future generations are doing for working professionals as well. If they want to um, jump to another, you know, another um, letter of career. They want to say that I have taken this course from University of Malaya, top 59 uh, university in the whole world. So you, that's why uh, it is important for us to have uh, the quality course, I mean, quality programs and course for them. OK, this is an example. OK, um, I do not want to show this in the beginning uh, because I don't want people to get confused, but now that I think everyone is OK. I'm going to show this. So remember I said about the stackable certificates. Uh, so uh, at one point, hopefully, um, uh, EDEC uh, will be able to do this. We can group the courses together and we can advertise it as um, a program, a, a micro-credential program where students have to pay up front. OK, let's take a look from EDX uh, platform. OK, their program, their program is called Micro Master's Program in MBA Core Curriculum. Those in uh, Faculty of Business and Accountancy would be very excited to see this. So this is a model without exam. So if you look at this one, they can uh, they'll say that there are seven graduate level courses. OK, this means that you don't have to think about your undergraduate courses only. You can also think about your postgraduate courses okay, if you want. So they can complete all these seven graduate courses in one year. And for each course, it will take about eight to 
10 hours per week. They have to pay up front 1350 US dollars. Yeah. And those uh, seven courses are marketing management, leadership, uh, down to corporate finance. So this is how they package it. Okay. If I go online and take it separately as learners, it's the same course, number one until number seven. Okay, remember the first one is marketing management, leadership and influence down to corporate finance. And each course um, is seven week long okay, with an effort of um, eight to 10 hours to complete for a seven weeks course. If we um, advertise it as single courses, the learners have to pay $214 to get the certificate, okay? So if you total up all these seven courses, it can be more than the bundle one. The bundle one will be $1,350, but if they take it separately, it will be cost to them. So that's why most people, if they want to get um, the stackable and bundle program, they will go for MC, okay? So look at this, um, this the, the model. There is no prerequisite to take this course, except for course number seven, corporate finance. If the student want to take the, the, the corporate finance course, they have to complete course number three, which is financial accounting. Okay, so uh, you can uh, simulate this if you're thinking about that. I, I presented this slide to the deans and directors um, so that they have ideas of uh, future microfinancial programs. Let's say that's why I want you to talk to the your coordinator, your TD and your deans, because they may have a plan, a grand plan for you or, or for the faculty. Okay, so they may think that, okay, in two years time, uh, we'll have this um, program okay, like this. Okay, another uh, example from similar, uh, from the same, EDX platform as uh, supply chain management. Uh, this program is very popular. Okay, they have generated about 4 million revenue and this revenue was split between MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and also EDX the platform. So this uh, program consists of seven graduate level courses uh, will take about one year, five months for them to complete the whole program and it comes with examination. Okay, so the first one is called Supply Chain Comprehensive Exam and then there are uh, six other courses without exam. I mean, not specifically for exam. So let's look at the, um, the, the division. Okay, so it's very um, compared to the first one. The supply chain management program is very tense. You can see that each course is 15 week, okay, 13 to eight, 13 to 15 weeks longer. Okay, so all these courses, um, they have to pay $199 if they want to get the certificate. Okay, so except. Uh, for all these courses, it will be 13 to 15 weeks, except for the comprehensive exam. It will take only one week. Okay, and the students have to commit three to five hours per week to, to take the comprehensive exam. And they will have to pay $200 US to get the certificate. And they are quite very smart. To take this comprehensive exam, they have, the, the learners have to complete all the six courses. Okay, so each courses can be priced at different uh, prices and at different level. We can see that the first course, supply chain analytics, is an introduction level. Uh, the second one is intermediate level, and the third one is advanced level. So we can have this kind of exam. Okay, let's say there is a professional uh, bodies that want you to have an exam. Um, in in your program, so you will think, how do I do this? So this is a model that we can try to simulate. Okay, um, and uh, these are from Griffith University. Um, course, the, the name the name of the program is Research Methods, and the name of the course is Why Research Methods. 
take a look at this it's only one course but 13 weeks okay of topics and subtopics and they have to pay one thousand and sixty four dollars to get um the the, the degree uh, sorry the certificate okay this one from um science computer okay you can see how they um they arrange uh the courses together again okay, and that's the end that's the end okay i think i will um, stop now in case anyone have any question uh, i will be here uh, till the end so let's um I will, I will then invite Dr. Zahi to um, start the session. Okay, so I think um, uh, we have um, uh, time for break. So why don't we have a 10 minutes break and we will start at uh, 5 minutes to 11. Okay, all right, very good. Okay. So see you in 10 minutes. Thank you. In the meantime, uh, I'll give you the uh, link to my presentation so that then you can um, go over it. Uh, Dr. Farah, Dr. Zahe? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this not ask uh, one question. I mean, uh, about, about, I'm not sure whether MOOC or MC. But then uh, we just uh, recently dapat um, invitation lah, the proposal from the uh, Asian Football Confederation. They wanted to do a collaboration uh, atau partnering in, in developing a course on child safeguarding protection in sports. So it can, it will be interesting about the other accreditation from that association and then it can be a, a, a stand alone, stand alone. I don't know whether it's going to be MOOC or MC scan, but it involves sports law, coaching, and everything. Mm -hmm. So, which uh, we did not, uh, uh, what you call it, offer in our program, but it can be a stand alone because uh, I think it, it, it can be a niche uh, program as well. So, uh, before, before I go further, uh, into this, I just you know want to know what what do you think of of the proposal? Uh, oh, I think that would be interesting. Uh, so because uh, so the the thing about law, uh, it's unique to a country. I think that is something that you need to think about as well when, when you try to uh, come up with a with, with the cause, isn't it? Uh, yeah, because, but the, the sports law is just a part of it. I mean, not like totally we're taking law law. Basically, we're talking about uh, safeguarding uh, child in sport. You know, some, sometimes yeah, uh, children. Think, yeah. So they, they had the element of global audience to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But before I go further and propose this to the boss, I was thinking, uh, do you think it will be good if we were to yeah, grant this opportunity and do both? Or MC? It will be a viable. Uh, it, uh, for this, I would say it's a MOOC first. MOOC because first. Uh, because uh, if you want to put it as uh, an MC, then uh, it, it, it comes with a guaranteed university credit, isn't it? So so which course does it, does it belong to? Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, a MOOC will be very, very interesting in this uh, one. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, I see Dr. No Adiana has been raising her hand for quite a while. Uh, do you have any questions? Um, Dr. Zai already asked question earlier. That okay. I, I lowered my hand. I don't know maybe why it appeared <laughs> <Okay. laughs> that way to you. Thank you. I share a uh, future learn. Um, page where uh, we have advertised our courses there so in the chat box yeah? okay, you can take a look
six courses that we have offered online. Uh, you may take a look. Um, I have shared the URL in the chat box. Um, so they're all interesting. Can I, okay, let's see Islamic calligraphy from APM. Okay. How many, see, 8,799 people have enrolled in this course. So imagine you have 8,000 plus students globally. Okay. In addition to your existing class in UM, which is 30 people to 100 students. So it's exciting. Okay. And the duration is three weeks. Um, what about the other one? Okay. These are the team from APM. This course have very high uh, 4.6 out of 5 um, stars, which is very, very good. Okay. Mm. And that's a video. You can play the video. Zahi, if uh, time's up, tell me. Eh? Very short introduction. Okay, Let's see. Let's learn Thai. Measure my screen. pronunciation of the Thai language. We do have another one. It's called Let's Learn Portuguese. Perhaps after this, um, API team can have a course on Let's Learn Arabic. Maybe. Do we have uh, API team here? Should we begin? This one is uh, Let's Learn Portuguese. Hi, hola, my name is 
name is Jamian Muhammad. I am a Portuguese language instructor at the Faculty of Languages and Linguistics, University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Welcome to the course, Let's Learn Portuguese Language. In this course, we'll teach you how to communicate in basic European Portuguese, or we could say Portuguese language of Portugal. We hope that you will be able to recognize simple words in Portuguese greetings. And at the same time, you can use basic conversation to introduce yourself. Portugal is located on the Iberian Peninsula in southwestern Europe and is bordered by Spain. Some people get confused that Portuguese and Spanish language are the same language. They are actually two different languages, although they look similar in written form, but different with pronunciation and grammar. Would you like to know how famous football players like Cristiano Ronaldo, Luis Figo, João Moutinho, and Nani speak? Don't you want to taste bolo, lipa caliao, or to enjoy the best pastel de nata of Portuguese egg tarts, which are of course made in Portugal? In fact, if you are a coffee lover, Portugal is famous for its various types of cafe with different flavors such as bica, garoto, galão, pingado, and much more. We hope that you will continue to follow this online course and discover this beautiful language and culture. See you soon. Até a vista. Okay. okay, so thank you, uh, Dr. Farah, for the um, uh, intersection. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, so now it's time for me to um, introduce to you the, the platform that uh, we are using, which is FutureLearn. Um, and um, hopefully we'll be, we will be able to uh, do a little bit of um, idea generation uh, while uh, having this um, uh, this this talk that I, I do okay so um, uh, to introduce myself my name is um, uh, Zahiruddin um, uh, you can call me Zahir so I, I, I think uh, quite a lot quite a lot of people I've seen I've met quite a lot of people who have joined this um, uh, this this session um, today so I'm going to talk to you about the uh, platform that we are using, which is uh, FutureLearn. So uh, uh, before we uh, begin in, uh, begin properly, uh, I think um, uh, so. This is uh, actually the, the definition of MOOC. It stands for Massive Online Open Online Course. So. Uh, it's an online course based on open access to education via website and it's part of the uh, OER open education resources that, um, uh, that people have been talking about um, and generally MOOCs are online course without entry requirement so that means uh, people from any walks of life can join it uh, you can be a, a school student in secondary or primary school or you can be a retired um, taxi driver or retired professor and you can join the uh, any of the courses without entry requirement uh, especially for MOOCs uh, and there's no limit to participation and it's generally free to learn so when you say when we say generally because uh, the model the, the the prevailing business model for MOOCs is actually free to learn pay to certify so now people would uh, be thinking why would I want to Certify. Why would I, why would I want to get a certificate from my my course, the the MOOC that I, uh, uh, I undergo or the MOOC that I take from different universities? So um, uh, in terms of uh, today's job market, 
so we can uh, already see that, that companies like Google um, and, and Microsoft and, and Apple is moving away from um, employing people with um, uh, a complete certificate. So when we say complete certificate, MSc in something, something, or masters in something, something what uh, these organizations are really interested in your skills, specific skills at the specific time that they need it. So um, in that sense, uh, even though you are, let's say, for example, um, a lecturer in um, um, microbiology, but if you are good at coding and you take a certificate, you have the certificate in coding and you want to go uh, work for Google uh, as a coder, you what you can do is you just take um, uh, uh, MIT, uh, an MIT course or a UCT Malaya course in coding and you show that certificate and you go to Google and say, actually, I can do this and this is a certificate too, uh, to, to prove it. So it actually gives you the, the flexibility uh, in terms of education. Uh, it gives you the flexibility in terms of getting the skill that you want and showing it to your employers. So similarly, uh, if you want to uh, go out in, a, in an organization, for example, uh, it's an NGO that you're working in, uh, and the NGO needs somebody who is um, competent in uh, engineering, but you are um, from, let's say, um, uh, Akademi Pengajian Islam or Akademi Pengajian Melayu. But if you can show that uh, to the organization that actually I have skills in this and I have the proof, the certificate proof that says that I'm actually competent at um, civil engineering um, work. So then that is, uh, that is the way that you actually show to the employers or uh, people who want to employ you. So this is uh, what you are worth. So that is how a MOOC is being set up and is being uh, positioned. Uh, the certificates are being positioned in terms of uh, yes, uh, yesterday, the future, future job market. Okay, so, um, so what differentiates uh, a MOOC with other open uh, educational resources. Okay, so a MOOC, uh, it is actually uh, because it's uh, open online courses, it will have a fixed start date and end date. So that means uh, the MOOC can be either three weeks or five weeks or 13 weeks, for, for example, as uh, what Dr. Farah is showing us now. Uh, and uh, the content will be paced and sequenced to follow a logical structure. So uh, when we do uh, courses, especially in our platform, FutureLearn, uh, the, the structure is actually being, uh, being, being set up in such a way that it's actually numbered. So it's uh, at least called step. So step one, step, uh, step two, step three. So it's, it's, it's like that. And there will be activities that uh, the, the learners will need to complete and also assessment. So and, and the, the assessment is where uh, the learners get the certificate. Okay. Uh, so before uh, I go in uh, any further, uh, I would like to sort of introduce you to two um, uh, specific technology uh, terminology that I want you to uh, remember uh, while we are doing this, uh, uh, having this this talk. The first is student. Okay. So student. When I say student, it means uh, our regular uh, residential students in the university. So that means uh, people who are in your first year, second year, third year, so uh, or master students. So this, those are students. And then um, the other terminology that uh, I'm going to use is learners. Okay, So learners are actually uh, uh, a bigger subset, of, uh, a bigger set of that. So a learner can be, uh, as I said before, uh, the, the primary school student, or the retired uh, taxi driver or uh, the, um, the the retired professor. So those are learners. And everybody actually uh, is involved in the uh, platform that we have. So in, in our MOOC, for example, or in our uh, micro credential. So um, in terms of um, the, the learners and the participants and what they do in MOOC or in MC, uh, 
especially in MC, if they want to buy the certificate at the end, then uh, it's still free for them to learn. So the learners who got the certificate will actually get uh, a copy of the uh, access. Uh, sorry, uh, they will get uh, perpetual access to the platform and to the learning they have done. So for example, if you have uh, done the uh, introduction to Malay language uh, in FutureLearn, so you will have uh, continued continue access uh, to that course as long as the platform exists. Okay. Uh, and that comes with the certificate. For the free uh, learners, they will get the access to the platform while the course is running. Because remember, MOOC will have started and ended. So while the, 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 the time period where the, the MOOC is offered, then they will have access to it. And then uh, normally they will have uh, for, they will have further access. So for, that, for them to think about uh, wanting to uh, buy the certificate, or another about, uh, about two weeks to a month. So that those are the time that they will have access uh, to the platform. Uh, when that time period ends, they will not have access to that. So this, those are the free learners. So for the fee paying learners, they will actually have access to that cost for, uh, at, uh, they will have perpetual access. Okay, so uh, in terms of um, history, actually MOOC has gone, um, uh, from uh, various iterations, and it starts uh, quite early, especially in 2006. So that is uh, where the, the concept comes up. But um, the real MOOC first started in uh, Stanford. Okay, so in 2011. So that's when uh, uh, two professors teaching uh, artificial intelligence uh, created a first MOOC course. Okay, and then uh, after a few years, especially after 2015, the business model of MOOC has um, like evolved. Then you start seeing things like um, micro credentials uh, at that time. So um, um, uh, in Stanford, uh, uh, the two professors, uh, Sebastian Prun and Peter Novik, they taught 160,000 online participants in the first ever MOOC. And um, the, uh, the, the news uh, uh, back then is that um, uh, the course is actually uh, opened up to uh, the, uh, the, the learners, but they don't get the uh, certificate um, that allows them to go and study into Stanford, but they get the same kind of learning uh, to the residential students in uh, Stanford. So, uh, so this is another um, news article on that. And if you look at the, um, the, the picture, how it works, it's actually uh, a similar running of uh, our Maklumat Terkini, oh, uh, Maklumat Semasa, isn't it? Uh, uh, week one, what happens? Week two, what happens? Week three, what happens? It, it, it runs up until uh, 14 weeks as any university course uh, is, is run. So uh, when, you talk, when you talk about MOOC, actually they, uh, they are uh, different um, concepts of MOOCs uh, practiced uh, all over the world. Okay, so um, the first uh, MOOCs, uh, the ones uh, done in Stanford, uh, especially, and then in MIT, especially, so those MOOCs actually focus on scalability, uh, scalab scalability. That means to open up the, the courses at the university. So you see that the MOOCs um, is, are really massive, like um, the one that um, the, the introduction to AI, uh, 160,000 students. Uh, and the way that it's done, it's uh, is a replication or the, the, the scaling of what a university course is. So that means it's a very, very long course. And normally what they do is um, they just record uh, the two hour lecture every year, uh, sorry, every week um, up until 14 weeks. And uh, after a, a big research on this, uh, it, uh, we find that um, uh, 
uh, scalability, uh, X MOOC, what we call X MOOC uh, or MOOC that focuses on scalability, doesn't really give the learners uh, the, the, the education experience because of um, um, the, the difference between sitting in a lecture hall and also sitting in front of a computer screen. Um, and uh, I think we can find this um, uh, when we do online learning with our students, isn't it? The students are actually really, really struggling uh, in terms of getting the, uh, the, the their learning done um, when they had to sit in front of the in front of the computer or the laptop for uh, two hours, and then another two hours with another lecture, and then another two hours with another lecturer. So um, there are uh, another type of work which is uh, what we call a CMOOC or connectivist MOOC, uh, connectivist MOOC. So the CMOOC focus more on uh, con community and also connection. This is where the, the, the notion of peer learning uh, uh, develops. So uh, peer learning means uh, when you do the, the learning on uh, the, the platform, you are not necessarily just learning from the, the lecturers or the educators, but that you are learning from uh, your peers as well. So remember just now when we have the uh, audience of MOOC, the, the global audience, it can be uh, anybody uh, in between uh, uh, secondary school students and a retired professor, isn't it? So the learners inside the MOOC becomes a community and they help each other. And we can see this um, in even in our own uh, courses, uh, especially the two early courses that uh, we have, which is introduction to Malay language and also introduction to uh, Islamic calligraphy. So, uh, of course, when you talk about MOOC, it is how massive is massive. So, uh, is 100 massive or is 100,000 massive? Uh, so, what about openness? How is it open? Uh, and we see that diff different platforms have different way of um, defining the, the openness of the MOOC. So, for example, if you go into course, if you do courses in Coursera, uh, if the course is, for, let's, let's say, for example, 10 weeks, uh, you are only uh, allowed to undergo three weeks, the first three weeks for free. Another seven weeks is actually hidden behind the paywall. So, the, the paywall. Uh, is defining where it's free and where it's not free. And if you want to have the certificate, then you need to pay uh, week three. So in, in Coursera, so that's how they do it. Uh, uh, in terms of like uh, platforms like uh, EDX or FutureLearn, you're still looking at it at the um, the the, MOOC, the the normal or the the, the prevailing business model, MOOC, which is free to learn, pay to pay to certify. And then you have the business model, the, the latest business model of MOOC, which is um, micro credentials and also online degrees. And we, we see that um, universities have already taken uh, this, this model on board. And we can see that uh, some universities have already uh, offered even up to uh, an online degree, uh, things like University of Glasgow uh, and University of Deakin in Australia. So, uh, of course, these are um, the, uh, the, the openness and how, how open is MOOC. And then, of course, it's online, but when online, uh, if you don't uh, monitor and manage the course during the time period when the course is open, then it will not be MOOC. Because uh, the interaction between the, the educators and the learners needs to be there. So that sets it apart from an open courseware, which is actually uh, uh, self -le self directed learning with no intervention by the the, the learners at, or the educators at all. Okay, and then uh, when you talk about the course, it's normally it's going to be um, self paced or self directed up to a point because it has started and ended. And um, when we want to uh, offer uh, credits. Then we move into the uh, MC uh, model, which is the micro credential model, where um, the paywall is actually at the, the front of the the front of the uh, course. And then for, and of course, um, the the learning community is where um, we want to focus on because um, 
when you have a good uh, and vibrant learning community inside the, the platform itself, then the, the, the educators can actually uh, take a step back. So uh, if, for example, your course is uh, six weeks, you don't really have to go in every day and, and uh, sort of uh, just reply to every comment uh, for the whole six weeks. You can actually go in um, uh, every two, three days and then uh, just comment or reply on the most interesting parts or comment on the, the problematic parts in the course. So uh, the, the learning community is where uh, we want you to design so that then you reduce your workload during the, uh, the run of the course. Okay, so that is uh, MOOCs and whether it's uh, uh, X MOOCs or C MOOCs. So um, of course, uh, it's uh, we design it. Oh, sorry, uh, the, the platform, which is FutureLearn, is designed based on the constructivist approach to that means the learners will learn together with their peers, with their peers, and they will, and the educators will be the facilitators. Where uh, we have been trying to promote this idea, the uh, the outcome based education is actually um, being promoted uh, even in IDEX training, not all the way. Um, okay, so so let's go into uh, the MOOC that we have already in the platform okay so we, we actually started with um with two courses and we started to um, have a collaboration with future since 2016 which is um very very early days in the in the mooc and um uh, now uh, especially during covid uh, because we have this collaboration with the um, platform so long we have uh, we have embarked on um a program, uh, what we call, what is called the FutureLink Campus. So there are a few universities are uh, doing this um, FutureLink Campus. Uh, one is ours, uh, and then uh, there are a few American universities and also a few U UK universities are doing this uh, FutureLink Campus, where uh, our students and our staff can actually uh, access uh, free um, short courses online. And without paying uh, anything, you uh, you you can get certificates. Okay, so if you want, if you are interested to do this, to try out the the, the platform, I would suggest that you uh, use this link that I've given. So it's in the in the presentation that um, I've given you. So you just click on that link and then um, uh, just follow the just follow the uh, access. Okay, and uh, it's actually. Uh, available until 30th June 2031, which is um, another six months to go. Uh, yeah, uh, not, not six months, four months to go. Okay. Um, okay, so, so let's look at the courses that we have now. Okay. So we, we have actually six courses online, as um, Dr. Farah was saying just now. Uh, the two First courses, which is, which are Islamic calligraphy and introduction to Middle language, has been run uh, four times now. So that's why uh, you see the numbers, the eight thousand uh, learners. Um, this is is our fourth run of the course, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we have um, uh, got rave reviews in terms of the usability, in terms of uh, the the. The course, the how how easy is it to to follow? Uh, how good it is? Uh, uh, when we do the uh, introduction to Malay language, uh, when we first designed the, the course, we designed it for those who wanted to uh, come to Malaysia and travel. Uh, but when when we run the course, what we found out was uh, the learners are actually uh, expats living in Malaysia, so uh, it. It is a really, really interesting um, uh, findings that we had, and um, there are a few um, uh, really, really good uh, peer instructors in there, which we we don't even pay. Uh, these are really, really uh, interesting people who would like uh, who would like to learn the language, and they have learned the language uh, by them um, uh, by themselves. 
and they are the ones actually uh, uh, active in helping their peers learn the language in um, the uh, introduction to Malay language course. And similarly with uh, Islamic calligraphy, there are people who, uh, from France, there are people from uh, from Malaysia, from from, uh, from the Middle East, who actually help each other uh, to uh, learn uh, calligraphy. Uh, uh, so those are the kinds of um, uh, learners and the design that we, that we promote in the course. Okay, so um, FutureLearn is actually uh, uh, founded by uh, Open University. So it's not uh, purely, uh, uh, I would say, commercial uh, venture in the beginning. So we find that um, uh, when we first uh, uh, got the invitation from them. Um, uh, the the majority of the people who are uh, like uh, the, the the backbone of the platform is actually uh, ex BBC people, uh, British Broadcasting British Broadcasting Corporation. So the kind of quality that uh, the uh, they have uh, in terms of the the design and also the the the, the user interface is actually really good. Um, and of course, Open University uh, gives the, uh, the the expertise in terms of learning. So of course, when uh, when we talk Open University, they are uh, the expert in uh, online uh, learning, distance education. So uh, every expertise that they have is actually put into the platform, which makes it a really really good platform to uh, in in my view at the very least. And they first. Uh, uh, started with uh, several courses from top universities in the UK, uh, some of the Russell Group universities, uh, Southampton, uh, uh, Liverpool, and and they are also uh, active with um, uh, organization things like um, British Council, uh, uh, and then the, the the one that 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 use that that administers IELTS, and these are the kinds of I would say. Uh, collaboration that we also wanted to have in our courses. So, for example, if you are from engineering, uh, why don't you uh, collaborate with a um, uh, board of engineers to offer CPT points, uh, as what uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Nujana uh, was discussing just now. Um, have, a, have a collaboration with uh, the Bar Association or uh, the, the insurance um, thing to, to actually have that. Uh, and you can you can even have a collaborative uh, course. That means uh, you offer the course with uh, collaboration with the uh, the bar association or the, the board of engineers. And they have you can even even put the the professional bodies logo uh, beside uh, our logo. So it can be done um, in in the platform. And um, uh, the MOOC. Uh, in um, uh, the the platform actually hosted uh, the biggest um, single MOOC um, course uh, in 2015, which is uh, understanding IELTS. Uh, so they have in one uh, period of running in 2015, 380,000 learners on the platform. So it's actually um, quite a very big uh, platform, uh, you can say. And we have been a partner since 2016. Uh, uh, in Malaysia, they only went after the two top university uh, in 2016. Uh, they contacted in 2015, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and they invited UM and UKM. So UKM turned, um, uh, turned them down. So we actually went on board because of the free contract that they offered. Uh, and we have been a partner since. So uh, for now, we have um, renewed our contract with uh, this platform uh, for three years. So starting from 2020, uh, and we wanted to make full use of the contract uh, that we have. Uh, as um, Dr. Farah was saying, uh, you don't have to pay anything because the, the, the subscription fee is paid by the university, uh, which is uh, actually 10,000 pounds a year for three years. So uh, what we do is uh, we make sure that the uh, the return of investment 
from the university is actually um, materialized. And in the same time, you also get um, uh, a reward from uh, having your course available to global learners. Uh, so this was the first two courses that we had. Um, and then now we have six. And actually the, the pedagogy in uh, future is based on um, uh, a UCL professor, uh, Diana uh, Lorilla, uh, conversational framework. So since we have time, I'm going to play this uh, video uh, to show you what kind of um, pedagogy that they um, um, bring into the platform. And um, later, maybe we can discuss a bit on how that uh, is evident in the platform itself. So hopefully um, this is running. So let me make sure that it's, run, it's running properly. Okay, please tell me if you cannot hear the uh, sound when I play this. If the learner is listening to the teacher, or watching a video or demo, or reading a book or website, that's coming up. learning through acquisition. It's very common in education. Yes, perfect. The opportunity for the learner to develop concepts, but it doesn't require them to do anything. All the other types of learning activity do. If the learner is going to the teacher or the library or the internet to find out something, that's learning through inquiry. It's a different way of reading a book, more under the control of the learner. And they have to come up with a question, evaluate what comes back, search again. It's a more active learning process, enabling that conceptual process to keep developing. If the learner is asking questions of other learners or answering their questions, exchanging ideas, challenging each other's arguments, that's learning through discussion. Listening and responding, articulating and arguing, they're all opportunities for the concept to develop. And if the teacher sets up a learning environment with a task goal, the learner then has to generate an action, interpret the feedback and maybe think about the relevant concept and try again to get nearer the goal. This is learning through practice. And suppose you get the students working together on a project where they have to produce a shared output, maybe a diagram or a definition or a design or report. This is learning through collaboration. It's different from discussion. Having to produce a shared output means they have to negotiate their ideas and practice until they agree so in the process, they're challenging each other and providing peer feedback to develop the best output they can. Even more opportunities for integrating and developing concepts and practice. And finally, when students are producing something for the teacher to evaluate, that's learning through production. Again, it may be a plan, a website, a performance, a theory, an analysis, but having to produce a public presentation of what they've learned is as important as getting feedback from the teacher. Many opportunities for integrating and developing concepts and practice. Together, all six types of learning activity cover most of what you're ever likely to ask a student. OK, so uh, those are the kinds of activities uh, that uh, is actually uh, being built in into the uh, platform. Uh, and uh, when you create your courses later, you will find that. Um, so uh, uh, notice that I use when, not if. So that means everybody in here will need to actually come up with courses. So uh, when you create your courses um, uh, later, uh, then uh, you will find that um, the platform actually allows you to embed all these diff six different activities into the uh, into the, the learning design and our instructional designers will help you design that, that, that learning. Okay, so um, uh, before we uh, go into the activities that I want us to do, um, uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, a question that 
uh, I want to answer. Okay, so what's in it for me? Uh, we have this question uh, by uh, our developers for a long time, um, since uh, we ever started this. Okay, the first one is um, make the cost, the, 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 the promotion, the self promotion, oh, it's, it's not really the self promotion, the, uh, the offering of your cost to the global audience. Uh, benefit you as an academy. Okay, the first thing is you you are actually showing your expertise. If you are um, um, a sports scientist, then you are uh, showing your expertise as a sports scientist to not just to the to the Malaysian audience, but to the global audience. Because sometimes um, uh, our uh, our role uh, in the university sometimes people uh, don't really see what we do. We do we do research, but we don't really uh, tell the tell the world. So this is the kind of research that we do, and this is how it can impact the world. Okay, so um, uh, so it, I think it, it jives well with uh, the 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 new UM vision, which is uh, global university impacting the world, isn't it? So this is how we uh, make an impact from our uh, from our perspective as an academic. So we show our expertise and we practice our, our expertise to the global audience. Make our research visible. Of course, um, when we talk in front uh, of a global audience, it's like going on TV, isn't it? Uh, other than that, the fact that uh, you, you don't really make uh, force people to sit in front of that, that TV. People go into that TV by, by design and uh, by their own conviction. So we make this uh, research visible. If you have a book, then you can actually use the book as a textbook for the course. So um, uh, if you write a book now uh, without having uh, an online course, uh, the market for the book is uh, other libraries and your, your current students. So if you use the book as a textbook in an online course with global audience, imagine the reach and the market for your book, which is actually really, really a bit you know, instead of just that, that that really niche audience. Of course, when you put yourself up there, you are actually networking for 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 research. Is it? Uh, this is when you will get uh, emails out of uh, out of nowhere from a university in Russia. Let's collaborate on a, a research project. Hopefully, okay, a conference presentation. So people will ask you then to. Uh, uh, present at the conference, the, the work, the important work that you do uh, that you can actually share to a larger audience. And uh, I would suggest to also use uh, uh, the online platform to the benefit of your uh, ICT students. So imagine a situation like this. You have your own, you have your own MOOC course or MC, MC course where you have your own learners who are, who are uh, the, the resident student here for probably let's say second year student working on a problem and then you have your the global learners uh, from different walks of life from the uh, primary school uh, lever just now or the secondary school lever uh, and also the retired engineer or the retired uh, doctor who go into your course and you can design the course uh, to your residential students that you benefit from the, the vast expertise from the global audience. So you can design it for, so that then uh, you can actually pair up your students with the, uh, the retired doctor or the, the, the XMP, for example, and work on real world problem. Uh, the problem that your, uh, your, uh, your, your global learners are facing. So, um, so, uh, I remember yesterday, uh, Dr. Farah was, was talking online about Sulam. So this is Sulam on a, like a, you know, a global scale. So that is how I think you can actually design your course into a very, very uh, beneficial uh, course to benefit and enrich the learning experience of your University of Malaya students, which you are actually teaching right now. So, uh, that is actually something that I think it's enough for us to 
to make us want to actually uh, create a course. And uh, I am actually uh, creating my uh, my course uh, on uh, the platform as well. Uh, and as so is uh, Dr. Farah, she's also um, uh, creating a course. So uh, our course will come out uh, and hopefully it will be uh, beneficial to um, you guys when uh, it's uh, online uh, later. OK, so. Uh, let's continue with the um, activity. So uh, before we continue with the activity, I would like to um, uh, look at the questions in the chat. And in the in the meantime, uh, uh, why don't you click on the link that I've uh, shown in the in, in the presentation? So it's um, uh, I would I think I would just copy and paste the link in the chat so that then you can join from there as well. Okay. It becomes bigger. Okay, it's okay. Just just click on the just click on the link. And uh, this is using uh, Dropbox paper. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you, you if you are if you are uh, familiar with Dropbox, so this is a, a Dropbox on uh, on adrenaline. So it's it's a little bit different. Uh, it allows us to actually collaborate online, doing things. OK, so uh, just go on the, the platform. OK, and in the meantime, I will look at the, uh, the, the questions in the uh, chat. OK, so uh, I think uh, let's start. At, OK, so uh, Dr. Ang, how is our role time spent counted towards our KPI? Um, I don't really understand the, the, the question. So, so do, do you mean that, uh, uh, Dr. Ang, uh, would you want to like, elaborate on your question if you're still online? Uh, okay. I think that's in, in, uh, in the context of uh, KPI. Lah. Uh, the KPI and calculation of KPI. So this one should fall under teaching and learning. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah mm. I, get, I get it. Yeah. So uh, it's actually uh, uh, falls in the teaching and learning uh, section. So um, uh, online learning section. So uh, we've actually discussed this with uh, with the uh, BSM, uh, and uh, uh, we managed to. Uh, put this as um, either or in uh, e-learning. So that means uh, either you uh, you fulfill the e-learning KPI or you do um, a MOOC course. So that is uh, uh, one uh, area. And then another area is um, you can uh, also get the same K uh, the, the KPI from this on the uh, faculty special duties. So uh, that's why we want you to discuss with the university, uh, the the school management or the, the PTJ management so that then it becomes a KPI for you um, in both areas. One is in the e-learning KPI and also in the special duty. So uh, you uh, have the, uh, the the maximum that you get from doing this will be about 10% of the e-learning KPI. So if you manage to, to get both from 5% from the e-learning uh, e KPI and then uh, another 5% from the uh, faculty special duties. OK, hopefully that answers the question. OK, so Dr. Tang uh, is the question is actually uh, for Dr. Farah. Mm, OK. OK, so uh, does that mean that students can get access to MC course without paying first since they are on Futureland campus? OK, so I mean since for MC they need to pay first, but uh, MC is part of course they need to pay first if they are not interested to get a certificate. OK, so uh, for uh, uh, a micro-credential course, um, since it comes with a guaranteed university credit, so the, the, the future model is uh, it's uh, pay first. And um, on Futureland campus, uh, MC courses does not, uh, it's not included. So that means uh, only MOOC courses is included. Um, so um, if you want the students to uh, be part of uh, the, the course that you are doing, I would suggest actually to um, 
uh, go with the MOOC course first. Okay, but I think uh, we will be uh, we can actually go to uh, FutureLearn and negotiate this. So, so because we are a partner uh, with FutureLearn, so we can still actually negotiate this uh, to allow our residential students to go in uh, as um, as a, 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 a free student uh, in the MC course. So, but we haven't done this before. So uh, I would say that we would uh, try to do this. But uh, if you want to design your course based on MOOC first, uh, so that means a free to the pay. By that, it's easy. It's easy for your learners to actually go in. So they they can complete the whole course without um, getting the certificate because then you can actually design the uh, the assessment uh, to be outside of uh, the platform with your residential student, isn't it? So it can be, uh, for example, you you do the assessment uh, uh, in spectrum, but they are learning you know, in. Uh, future list. It is you can design it that way. I think uh, hopefully that answers uh, the question. So I think um, uh, the flexibility is there for us to uh, actually design the course how we want it. And then uh, the question from uh, Dr. Nojana: Is there a uses of bots to deal with FAQs? Um, okay, so uh, we haven't seen an example of using bots yet in in, in future list. But there are cases uh, where people are you are using bots in uh, other types of chat chat rooms. Okay, so um, uh, in the platform, I don't see it yet. But we can actually design bots in, in, in even in Telegram and and and, uh, and WhatsApp thing. Uh, I know Telegram you can use bots, but WhatsApp I'm not sure. Uh, maybe you can use bots now. Okay, so um, uh, hi Raymond, hi Nujana. Okay, so it's okay. Um, okay, uh, if global audience is the target, a series of case studies on spectral crimes in nature would garner interest. Oh, yes, of course. Um, uh, that is uh, something that you can use to sort of uh, uh, market your course. So you can, you can design, so it's based on uh, how you want to design your course, isn't it? Uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, all up to you. So uh, uh, anything that's a niche to Malaysia would be a, 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 a pulling factor, a pull factor for the course. And this is because um, Malaysia is actually um, quite uh, well known um, uh, in, um, in many areas. And we can use that uh, to actually, um, uh, to our advantage. I, I remember, uh, last time uh, when uh, uh, remember the uh, we have that that hoo ha about um, uh, calligraphy in school, so we wanted to sort of um, like uh, uh, put in our 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 mark on it, and uh, I would I I I I then say to uh, uh, the TSC, let's open up the, the, the calligraphy course during this time. So, but of course, uh, 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 she said, uh, uh, please don't do that because uh, we are we are we are not really we are actually uh, uh, trying to add fire into the, into the, so 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 uh, we ended up not not opening up the the calligraphy course. But it's actually something that is something that is market, marketable, isn't it? So, for example, we have this course right now uh, running chem chemometrics in air pollution. So I, I actually uh, uh, went to talk to um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Firuz, who's doing this. And I said, uh, I think the best time for you to open up the course is uh, uh, the period between July and September. Why? Because that is when we have haze in Malaysia. So open up the course again uh, during that time. So uh, it's something that um, uh, you, you you capitalize on the, um, uh, the 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 best time to do things, isn't it? So that then you can get gain traction to uh, your course. So that is how I think we can design the course. And uh, when we do the simulations, uh, actually to for the for the course to really really make an impact um, financially and also to to the global audience, uh, you need to you should uh, aim to. Um, uh, offer the course uh, at least three or four times a year. So uh, the course can be short, it can be two weeks or three weeks, or it, it can be long, it can be about uh, five or six weeks. But uh, 
aim and plan to open the course at least three or four times wow. per year. So then it, it turns. And uh, okay, um, uh, one thing I think uh, before we uh, we forgot. Uh, uh, open uh, sorry the micro financial or MOOC course. Uh, it's not a one off work for. It's not one off project. We we would like uh, for the courses to actually run every year and um, actually uh, several times each year. And uh, the, the simulation uh, shows that actually if you run that every year, you will find that the courses will actually uh, start to pick up traction and to get more learners. So that's why uh, you see uh, the calligraphy, you get 8,000 learners. It's actually based on uh, three runs of the course. And every time the course runs, the number of learners increases. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, one last one, Dr. Yohannes, do you have any questions? You can see you're raising your hand. So if there's no question, okay, let's... Um, um, Just, uh, Dr. Zai, one, yeah. one question with regards to the time commitment. Okay. Mm. Uh, time commitment, so is there a question? Oh, okay. So, uh, Okay, so time commitment. Um, which is it, Doctor Jana? Okay, so uh, to uh, to to create a course, uh, you can actually uh, spend around the, the minimum would be I would say uh, about four months for a, a single course. Okay. So, so if you have if you plan to have like for example, um. Uh, three or four courses, then you need to time it. But I would say that uh, once you've done it once, then it will be uh, easy for you to actually catch up the, the, the subsequent uh, course design because you've already known uh, what are the what are the pitfalls, uh, how what is the challenges, isn't it? So then uh, it becomes easy over time. So that's that's on the basis that you already have all the material, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's go into our Dropbox so that. Okay. So let's go into our Dropbox. So um, uh, can you see the, the, the Dropbox paper? So it's micro credentials at UM uh, workshop and I see that there are several people that are already in. So uh, this is the first exercise that I want you to do. Okay. Uh, which is um, uh, what is your big question? So uh, when you uh, design uh, a question, uh, that means the the course that you wanted to do, uh, it's uh, it's best that you design it surrounding one big question. Okay. For example, uh, we have this these four examples. So what you do is you just um, uh, uh, click on the the bottom and then you just just start typing. So uh, so the, the example is actually from our previous courses. So DNA testing for diseases, uh, saving dugong, conserving our marine heritage. So those are the big questions. Um, uh, the, the name uh, for the course that uh, actually attracts people to want to uh, join uh, the course, isn't it? So uh, I would uh, want everybody now to spend about 10 minutes to type in your your big question, the, the, uh, the, the name of the questions that you wanted to um, promote or uh, use for the course that you wanted to teach uh, or develop on uh, uh, SMOOC or uh, micro credential. So you can actually start typing uh, already. And make sure you type it below the four examples. Don't uh, delete the uh, anything. So Dropbox Repo is actually a collaborative um, workspace uh, that I use in class uh, all the time. So I'll give you ten minutes to think about. Uh, uh, name of the course, make it as um, as interesting or as sexy as you want. Okay. 
So let's see uh, anyone that can come up with the first one. Okay, so we have 10 minutes. So we, uh, by 12 o'clock, there should be at least uh, like, uh, 30 to 50 course names. Okay, so we have ah, just now a uh, really interesting uh, name by uh, Dr. Raymond. So capacity planning, the crystal ball of it, of IT, okay. And then Dr. Fazli come up with how to determine energy efficient of engineering system. Okay, and then this is Dr. Muhammad, um, occupational health uh, identify as a as a sink control and this at workplace. Okay, so three, very good. Okay, so Dr. Salima is adding. Uh, deriving insights. So you can actually put in more spaces. Okay, so uh, we've got we get we are getting uh, more titles now. Um. Enhancing hot through trans for children. Wow, that's interesting. So, Doctor Tan, is it for um, what what age? So, children is quite quite uh, quite general, I think. Toddlers, older children, preschool. Ah, okay, preschool children. Well, Dr. Salima is also has uh, also a, an interesting name or interesting cost deriving insights from dark data via data science. Is it dark data or dark web? It's actually dark data, dark data. So what is the difference between dark data and dark web? Uh, dark data, I don't know what is dark web. Dark data is the data that you have collected but you never use. Like for oh, example, okay, yeah, okay. in our faculty, we collect a lot of data from students, from staff, from assessment and so on. But we never make use of the data to gain insights. Ah, if okay. we ask the faculty to use the data for data science uh, exercise, they say, oh, this is a privacy issue and so on, you know, so it's difficult to do data science. Okay. Thank you. Plant diversity and identification. Uh, this is by Dr. No Adiana. Okay, we have five more minutes. So please come up with your, your titles. Think about your titles. Make it interesting. Uh, uh, make it, uh, design it where 
uh, people when people read it, they think, oh, this is interesting. I want to 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 join. So design the, the course name uh, like that. Presenting or talking, you tell me. So is tell a model, uh, Dr. Lincoln? Fit for financial claims. Okay. Interesting. Oh, no. Tell here is just for emphasis. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. So uh, thank you, Dr. Amirul, for uh, joining us. So um, hopefully uh, we will get to see Dr. Amirul's um, course uh, later. So while people are thinking about their course names, uh, I'll, I'll go through the chat. Really, really quickly. See, Dr. Ang, um, we can get time off for prep materials. Yes, uh, we actually um, discussed it uh, at the, the faculty level and at, at the higher management level. And uh, what uh, Prof. Kamila is saying is that uh, you get actually uh, one less cost to do uh, yeah. micro credentials or uh, MOOC. Okay. But uh, I agree there are departments with not enough lecturers. Uh, so um, that's why uh, we would like uh, the, uh, for you to actually form a team uh, to do uh, courses like this. So um, among uh, the, the projects that we've uh, run so far, Actually, there's only one with, uh, sorry, two with, with a single lecture. Uh, all the other, uh, all the other courses are run as a team. Uh, the the introduction introduction to Malay language uh, uh, was run by three people, one, two, three, four, oh, four people. Uh, the introduction to calligraphy was run by four people as well. Um, and then. Uh, for um, the, the engineering course, uh, it's more people. Uh, how many uh, from the engineering course? I think it was six, probably. Six in, the, in that team. Uh, was there, uh, was doing the, was doing the course. So uh, design uh, and collaborate with your, uh, uh, with your uh, colleagues at the faculty to produce uh, one course. So it, it lessens the work work burden uh, through the development and it also uh, uh, lowers the work uh, during um, during the, the, the running of the course. So for example, if you are three people and you have six a week course, so um, you have only to go in just two weeks to, to, to manage, monitor and, um, and add uh, to the discussions in, in, in the course. So uh, and then your team member will be able to um, take care of the other um, four weeks. So it makes the work uh, much, much easier. So I hope that answers uh, Dr. Nofia, Nofadia. Uh, so get a team uh, uh, among your, your colleagues to run at least two. So um, uh, it, it also helps with, with motivation. Um, uh, I know I'm, I'm running um, uh, I'm also um, I'm facilitating or coordinating two teams uh, right now. Uh, one is from uh, medicine, uh, doing the course name clinical audit. So there are three in that team, with somebody from the Ministry of um, Ministry of um, Health, and they uh, always support each other. When when I go into their their meetings, they always uh, 
uh, uh, support and encourage each other in during the, the, the meetings. And another one is uh, from Faculty of Languages, um, uh, the, the, the Korean language. They are also really, really uh, interesting people. They are uh, one, two, three, four, five. I, I, I think uh, Lincoln is part of the, the Korean language team. Uh, uh, team, is it? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. So I now <laughs> remembered you. So Dr. Lincoln is actually part of the uh, Korean language team. Um, um, uh, would you want to like um? Uh, share a little bit here the, the the teamwork that you had in in that in that team. Oh, um, actually, I'm just play a very small role. So, <laughs> I, actually, uh, in terms of content, actually has been uh, done by both uh, Miss Wong, Doctor Kim, as well as Juan Susana. So, the rest of us we are partly you know supporting the whole program, and then when we have uh, this uh, whatever that they have draft and everything and then of course in terms of uh, work dynamic I think Miss Wong and Dr. Kim they have been really great because they will share with us you know the progress and everything and also we have support from I think PTM uh, we have two yes. uh, designers uh, yeah helping us so we are really grateful uh, for, uh, for the whole team yeah, okay. yeah all right thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, thank you, uh, Dr. Lincoln. So, uh, so uh, we've got uh, some more interesting uh, titles um, uh, that we can see here. So, uh, um, just now, survivorship and cancer. Uh, so, I think that is um, it's going to be very, very interesting and very, very um, useful for uh, a global audience. Survivorship and cancer, and I don't think. Uh, I have seen that that title in in FutureNet. So, um, Dr. S Y M. So, what is the real name for this? Who are you, S Y M? No, Siu Yim. Okay, thank you. This is a really really interesting topic. Uh, I would really, really suggest that you um, create this this course. It will uh, benefit not just learners who want to have a certificate, but it will um, be of use to anybody who have, who have had cancer. So uh, I would really, really want to see this course um, uh, being offered by us in the end. Okay, so thank you very much for the first exercise. So what's the big question? So uh, you will have, still have access to this um, uh, Dropbox paper, so you can actually go, go in and join uh, anytime. Um, okay, let's go to the second exercise. So I have half an hour with you. So uh, for the, the second exercise, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go, want you, want, I want you to go into a course in FutureLearn and experience the learning for yourself. So I'm going to give you uh, 30 minutes to do this. Uh, what you do is you click on the FutureLearn Campus uh, Unit Simla. Yeah? So if you have not registered, just click on that and um, uh, register with your UM mail. Hopefully, uh, send will be make it will make it easier. So register with your UM mail uh, because uh, the platform needs you to verify your UM mail. So it will tag you on your UM mail. Uh, if you register without your email, you would not get the, uh, the, the, the promotion. Okay, so uh, click on the link, uh, register with uh, uh, FutureLearn Campus, and go into FutureLearn, any course in FutureLearn, and uh, go through one course. So it doesn't have to be uh, from your own discipline. So let's uh, look at uh, a course that's running on FutureLearn right now. Any course, so this will still be open. So let me. So just go into FutureLearn um, and Oh, um, uh, while we are in future, I want to show you something. So this is Unifil of, of Glasgow. So it's actually um, quite a really famous university. It's a Russell Group University. Um, 
they have one online degree, they have three micro credentials, and they have 31 courses in all areas. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what we wanted to uh, like uh, uh, be in a uh, few years time. So we we can actually offer a uh, degree, uh, micro credential, and also courses. So let's go into uh, the FutureLearn um, platform and just uh, open up and say, let's say, because I'm in big environment, but I want to try and look at um, IT and computer science. Okay, so I just go there. Um, so this is um, so this is a different expert track. So this is for uh, skill specialization. Uh, so looks like let's look at the cost. So I want to try okay, any of the costs here is uh, actually uh, cost that is running. So uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi Foundation and National Center for Computing Education. So let's click on this one. So what you do is just click join cost for free. So you know it's three weeks and two hours, okay? And if you wanted to buy, buy the certificate, it's going to be uh, forty-nine dollars or about um, forty-five uh, pounds, okay? And this is actually a certified CPD course, okay? So you can learn the course for free, but if you be, if you if you get the certificate, then you uh, it actually gives you a CPD certification. So this is something that we wanted uh, you to try. So uh, so uh, introduction to computer networking for teachers. So uh, we just click join course for free, and then just click on the free option. Okay. So now I'm actually in the course. So of course um, uh, they will. Uh, uh, show this. So this is a uh, European uh, Data Protection Act. So they need to show this. So then we started with we can start with the course already. So this is um, uh, video. Uh, so normally the course is designed with a video, and then with a uh, comments section. So this is actually where uh, the, the learning happens. Okay. So uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go in uh, any of the course. Uh, it can be in your area. It can be in a different area. And then uh, go through the course, which is uh, currently running like this. Uh, and then I look at the, where was this? Okay. So I want you to look at um, uh, what you like about the course. Okay. Uh, what are the features and activities? you want to adopt into your own course okay and why do you think that is that that activity do you think is is, uh, is beneficial to your learners and also what are the things that can be improved about the course so you think that uh, it should have been designed in a different way so this is what i want you to uh, try and uh, do so uh, uh, if you if you go to the course you will see that the course is actually in future is, is um, structured by steps so these are the steps so welcome to the course and it's numbered isn't it so it makes it easy for us to actually uh, go through the course so we, we like the way that the, the course is structured um, uh, in the platform okay so this is just week one so 12 steps for week one and then uh, week two have 11 steps. And then week three, they have 13 steps. Okay, so uh, I would like to, I would like you to actually go through and you will find that uh, there are videos. You see, there are videos, there are articles, discussion, uh, and then articles and then videos. So you can actually um, uh, design this uh, videos article discussion it's actually based on the six uh, uh, learning uh, learning pedagogy uh, by the UCL professor Dr. Oh, professor Diana just now okay so I'm giving you 20 minutes to go into any of the course sorry 30 minutes to go into any of the course and then start 
um, writing. So this is an example. So this is from also from the last time that we had the at this this workshop. Okay. So uh, let's spend um, uh, this um, the remaining twenty minutes. So we have we are now at twelve ten. So we should finish by twelve thirty. So we have this twenty minutes, and then um, uh, I expect to see at least three or four um, uh, of these uh, comments, and then um, I I will I will read it out so that then we can actually start exploring. And and the purpose of this exercise is for you to start exploring at the platform, and then uh, starting to uh, think about how you are going to design the course. Because sometimes uh, when um, we have uh, inquiries from uh, lecturers wanting to sort of start doing this, uh, uh, people come in with no idea uh, about uh, MOOC and, um, and no homework being done. So that means um, totally depending on us to tell what's going on. Uh, but I would say that the, the best way to approach um, any new things is actually to, to Google it. Google it first, isn't it? Uh, so, and do a little bit of homework. So, I'm actually um, getting you to do the homework now in my session so that then you can have an idea of how uh, a MOOC is run, how a MOOC is designed, okay, by actually going through a course yourself. And you can do it really, really quickly. Okay, so we will give you um, another uh, 15 minutes or so. Then we are going to um, hopefully see um, uh, comments in the exercise two section. In the, in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to turn on your mic and uh, ask. Okay, let's uh, look at the questions probably. So from charity, is the course editable official after it has been published? Yes, the course is actually uh, editable. Uh, and every subsequent run, uh, we will copy the, the content from the old one to the new course. Maybe I can show you uh, how we can. See this. Here. So in the platform, so this is um, uh, uh, the runs of introduction to Malay language. Okay, so uh, we first started. Um, so the first run was uh, was done in 2017, and then uh, the latest run was 21st September 2020. Okay, and there were actually 1,800 learners who um, is waiting for the course to open up again. Okay. So let's see Islamic calligraphy. So this is also um. Uh, a popular course. Okay, so the first run was in 2017, and then we had another run in 2018. We had another run in 2020. Okay, and we have 4,000 learners who is waiting for the course to run again. Okay, so let's look at uh, the new course uh, that we had. Um, so this is my course that I'm that I'm running uh, that I'm doing. It's not yet. It's not finished yet. So let's go to Thai language. Okay. 
So this is also a popular course. So, uh, but this is the first run of the course. So you see that the, the learners are not that many because it's just the first run. Uh, so where is our Portuguese, 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 Portuguese? Hmm, I didn't see the Portuguese language. It's okay. Ah, yeah. Okay, Portuguese language, uh, we finished this. Oops. Okay, so Portuguese language is finished. Uh, it started 18 January just now. And we have 300 learners who wanted to uh, learn. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, editable, yes, it is editable. So in uh, the next run, you can actually improve it, uh, add more uh, activities, probably take out the, the activities that people uh, don't like, or add more um, useful activities people that the people want. Okay, so we, we allow uh, uh, we allow people to um, link to uh, external resources because uh, sometimes when we do quiz. Uh, we find that the the inbuilt built in quiz is not um, is not uh, really powerful enough for us to do things that we wanted to do. So we we are subscribed to uh, like a quizzing um, a quizzing app that we can actually do um, uh, outside. So uh, we also uh, have done that with our courses. Uh, once we publish our course in FutureLearn, who is going to maintain and monitor? So um, the the maintenance. Uh, of the course uh, will need to be done uh, as a collaboration between the the educators and also our uh, our team in in future uh, sorry our team in in edec uh, but uh, we uh, what we wanted you to do is uh, after the course is finished you, we would want you to actually go through the comments and then um, sit together with us and discuss improvements uh, the monitoring, uh, that is the maintenance part. So the monitoring, uh, that means uh, discussing with the learners uh, uh, or, or sort of uh, responding to the learners will need to be done by you because learners would want um, uh, the educator to be present or the, the, they want to feel the presence of the educators. So Dr. Haizril, um, you would need to actually come in uh, at uh, some point of time in the course as an educator to actually um, look at the, the, the comments by uh, the learners. And the, the way to do this is actually um, uh, already built in, in the platform. Because uh, let's say, for example, uh, let's go to the Portuguese language course. So let's view the course plan. Okay, so I think I can't join because I'm not part of the team. If I... Oh yes, I can. Okay. So, so what you do uh, as uh, an educator, so you can actually uh, do this pinning. So you pin the the, lang the, the language. Uh, the, you pin the comments. Okay. And then, of course, you see those are the kinds of replies. And uh, uh, Jamian is actually quite um, quite um, uh, quite active in, in the platform. So uh, uh, what the educator can do is the educator can actually sort the comments by either your comments or following. OK, so uh, of course, I don't have any follow, follow, follow comments yet. Okay. But when you like or reply, so the educators can actually click on uh, the, the most like um, the comments and then comment on that. So you see uh, those are the things that people, those are the comments that people sort of um, uh, gravitate towards, isn't it? So then that is where you make the connection with your uh, learners. Okay. 
So let's try and look at um, another step. So this one, for example. Okay, so um, everybody is um, uh, in introducing themselves. Okay. Uh, I don't know Portuguese. <laughs> okay, so uh, so those are the kinds of activities that you, will help you to actually monitor uh, the, the cost um, and uh, helps you to create the, the, the connection with your uh, learners. Okay. Um, so this is um, Dr. Nofadia. Thank you at this moment. Due to the insufficient number of legs, and management teaching load, practically can help much. Uh, Oh, okay. So I think I've I've already answered this. Uh, this just now. Have a team uh, to to um, to create and develop the course. Uh, Dr. Salima, uh, what I need uh, now is to explore how to create a course. Okay. Uh, sure, you can do that. Uh, Dr. Jana, um, so key in marks for Maya. Okay. Uh, I have I also have not key in my marks. Uh, Sorry, Dr. Zahid, can I yeah. interrupt? Yes. Um, actually, it's part of my sabbatical plan to come up with a short course. Okay. okay. Um, but I still cannot explore since you do not let me in to, ah. you know, exploit. Okay. Well, actually, when uh, we, we, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, the, the way for us to create courses is um, that the courses can only be created at the, uh, the central level. So uh, not, not everybody can actually go in and then start creating a course. So I would suggest Dr. Salima for you to come to uh, us at edX, uh, come up with the, come up with the, uh, the, 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 the template, e just email us, and then we will start to help you start, it, start to develop the course. So when you've already sort of have everything uh, all together, then we will start, uh, we will create the course for you so that then you can um, start uh, putting in uh, your resources and your activities in the platform. So it, not everybody can just go in and create uh, a course in the platform. It's like, it's well. not, it's not like open learning, right? We can no. just explore. Yeah. No. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. okay. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Dr. Pika, so this is uh, actually replying to Dr. Muhammad Israel. Um, will you guys share? Of course, we will share the recording. Um, okay, so Belinda, oh, so this is uh, this is um, uh, um, question and already answered. Okay, okay, and yes, of course. Uh, since the the platform is actually quite uh, a stickler in uh, quality, they would also want to have um, a time for them to review the cost, and, and they normally require require um, uh, one month for them to review. But we would suggest that um, you create and finish the cost. Uh, actually, about two to two three months before you your plan to open the cost. And this will allow you to actually have an internal review process and also uh, allow FutureLearn the time uh, for them to market the course. And they do quite uh, um, heavy, heavy marketing work in uh, for social media. So you will find um, um, if you follow FutureLearn, they would uh, market courses in, in Facebook, in Instagram, and all the social media, uh, even, even in Twitter. So, uh, so uh, three months is the best. For you to uh, to get the, the marketing to be done and they will do the marketing for us you don't have to worry about marketing okay so let's go back to our uh, dropbox paper so um, there's still nobody uh, who sort of finished a course to uh, write something there but it, i think it's okay um, the the access to this uh, is um, uh, is not uh, is not going to end after the after the course. So you can still actually go in and do the homework 
Okay, that means, uh, so make it as a homework. So uh, in between uh, key in marks to Maya, I know um, uh, it's it's not really that, um, that, that easy to key in marks to Maya. Uh, so uh, if you all, you, if you feel tired of, of course, uh, after uh, the, the 40th student, then stop and uh, go into the courses in future learning. Try to experience learning and write something in here so that then you can actually uh, uh, benefit not just yourself, uh, you can also benefit others who wanted to uh, create a course. Okay, so uh, let's at least read the, the ones that we already have here. So I don't think Lee Wan Lee is, is laughing. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so this lecture uh, started with um, uh, with uh, writing fiction. Okay, so uh, and the, the comment was the title was catchy. Uh, so uh, he or she found another course type of creative writing, but this one is active. That means it's, it's running now. Okay, so uh, so what um, this person likes about the the course is it brings guests to discuss issues in the video. So I would. Uh, imagine that uh, uh, the, the lecturer or the educator bring in uh, a third party guest um, and then to discuss uh, issues in writing fictions, probably a writer. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, so the comment is I was surprised it have a good platform to write and discuss. Coursera does discussion platforms better. There were also very long texts with a very few videos. I only had the time to look at the first two weeks, so I may be the letter, so I don't know. Okay, so so those are, those are the kinds of comments. So uh, my question to this person is, then how would you design your course uh, so that uh, the discussion is, di is, 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 is better in the course that you, you created? Okay, so let's look at the second one. So this one is uh, a programming course. Uh, programming for everybody getting started with Python is a six week course. Okay, so that's uh, the detail of the course. Um, teaching basic programming by providing many examples. So, probably that's the, the feature that you would like to uh, adopt the course. And then the bonus material a visit to a living computer museum in Seattle, California. Okay, um, so um, where is the improvement? So, there's nothing, there's no improvement. Okay, so I think. Um, uh, please uh, write uh, and contribute to the uh, to this uh, discussion in Dropbox paper so that uh, it helps you to uh, think about the cost that you are going to um, to do. Okay, so uh, I see that Ini Dr. Ini started to write something. Please continue writing. Okay, um, uh, and um, we will actually really go through prompt. Uh, I can actually uh, give comments in here. Uh, for example, so like this. Um, so uh, Dr. Hanam is actually has a really, really nice title. Can computers speak and write like this? So you can actually uh, give comments in here. You can either type something. So, and I use this platform with my students quite a lot. Then you click, click on post, uh, or like this one, um, survivorship in cancer. So this is, uh, so and you don't have even to even have to type. You just put like that. So it's a comment uh, that people can and uh, can can use. Um, so uh, I use this uh, with my uh, uh, students uh, during online learning because it helps, uh, it allows me to know who's writing. So I can know uh, if this is my student. So I know this is Raymond, this is Fazli, this is Salima. So I know uh, I will be able to see, okay, who's contributing into the collaboration uh, and who's not. Um, and also what they are saying. And, and I can give comment right there and there. So, um, so hopefully you, you will learn something uh, from this. So uh, first is the, the MOOC and micro credential and also uh, a tip on uh, conducting online um, courses. Um, but it's not inspector, it's uh, just online. OK, so I think uh, that's all that I, I have the time for you. So um, 
Okay, Posi psychological first interesting, you call simple. Okay, uh, continue writing, Dr. Ini. So I going, I'm going to pass this uh, session back to the uh, moderator. Uh, okay, and of course, Belinda uh, will um, brief you on the next step. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Zahe, and thank you so much, Dr. Farah. Um, <clears throat> and thank you to everyone for staying until the end. Um, I think we have highlighted every questions uh, out there in the chat area. So, but then if you have any questions now, you can just unmute yourself and then shoot it up. <laughs> or maybe not. All right, so wait, what you can do now is um, if you are interested to develop your own online course under our uh, micro credentials project, please uh, send your email to EDEC and we will assist you um, from start uh, <clears throat> by giving you the template one, you fill it, fill it up, um, that, that kind of process, okay? But then uh, first of all, just email to us and we will ent entertain you. I will, I also have attached the slide presentation. You can find it in this channel. If you leave the meeting, it will be there in the <clears throat> in the post of, of this channel. Okay. Linda, where can we get recordings of the session? Um, after this, we will end the recording session. It will be available immediately in the Teams. But then um, we will take a few days for us to upload it in our YouTube channel. But then um, if you're in this channel already, we can just uh, watch it after the webinar ends. All right. I think there is a um, question by Dr. Raymond. Do the faculty management already know about this initiative? Is there a general agreement by deans that this is a way to go? Yes, Dr. Raymond, it has been presented to the deans um, in July 2020 and it's also included in their KPI or faculty KPI that every faculty has to uh, publish at least one MOOC or MC per year and the amount will increase every year. So if this is 2021, they should have, if I'm not mistaken, two or three MOOC or MC per year. So um, I've, I've noticed a comment from one of the audiences about um, the negotiations need to be done with the HOD for departments who are, you know, have limited staffs. So you, you have to do the negotiations, even though the TNC has issued this and that uh, you can say this is part of the faculty KPI. So perhaps you can contribute to the uh, KPI of the faculty by offering your course. Okay. I think we should end here, Linda. Um, and I would like to thank everyone for listening to the session and for your input and uh, your kind interactions with us. Do contact us at EDEC anytime you like to talk about the MC at UM project. No. Don't forget to drop your feedback. We have provided the feedback form. If you have any more inquiries, just um, drop your comments and suggestions and your inquiries in the feedback form. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a good lunch, and hopefully, I will see. We will see you in um, develop your online courses with us. I need number two. Sorry. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Please complete the feedback form. We really need the uh, the feedback form for our CRIM and also internal audit. So usually a lot of people come to the uh, edX session, but they um, miss out the feedback form. So we always get questioned why we don't have feedback from participants. So please help us um, with this and complete the feedback form. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Bye.